Okay, so uh, we're asking uh, dumb uh, SEO questions. Uh, each week we meet to uh, answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, with us tonight we have Dan. Uh, we also have uh, Edwin. Uh, Edwin um, is uh, CEO of idashosts.nl uh, in the Netherlands. And um, Masataki Wasa is um, webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google top contributor on the AdSense and Google Plus help community. Rob Mars is an AdWords aficionado. Uh, he uh, runs a website in the Netherlands, uh, marketbiz.nl. Uh, it's spelt with um, two Zs. And uh, Tim Kappa, uh, he uh, uh, runs a website in, in the UK, uh, onlineownership.com. Uh, he's a conversion rate optimization specialist and proud to call himself an SEO. Uh, he's based uh, in the Midlands of uh, London. Is that Midlands of England, is it? Yeah, it's oh. just called the just called the Midlands. So it's um, yeah, it's well, it's. 60 minutes north of London, but it's technically the Midlands because it's middle of the UK. <laughs> I should have said Masataki Wasa uh, is based at Wimbledon uh, in London. Okay, so um, each week um, um, we um, answer the uh, questions asked. Our first question tonight on your run list guys is uh, number one, oddly enough. Um, it's from Bali Ravi Kumar um, on changing HTTP to HTTPS. Uh, Bali asks, uh, I can anybody suggest, uh, recently our client is, ha has changed their site URLs from HTTP to HTTPS. Uh, is there likely to be any effect uh, on the site um, regarding keywords? If you if you um, migrated it correctly, and all of your URLs were properly uh, redirected, uh, then there should be no. Uh, effect whatsoever. Uh, your backlinks will obviously be uh, redirected with the 301. Your traffic will be redirected um, and your keyword positioning should remain the same. Uh, there might be a little bit of slight fluctuation but in theory it should um, it should all remain the same. Anybody else? We've got this whiz bang uh, queue timer uh, now that where, where we uh, run the uh, questions um, um, from uh, the community as well. Um, we ha we had a couple of responses uh, um, to this, but I think only one of them is showing. Um, and uh, somebody called SEMXE said it can have an effect if not migrated properly. Um, I have to say that um, I uh, don't sweat on this stuff all that much, but um, we've got a, a few sites um, that are SSL in part. And um, so I, and there's one site in particular, the certificate was coming up for renewal, so. Uh, I, I replaced the certificate and uh, set the entire site uh, to be SSL. Um, and that was about two or three weeks ago and that site normally makes about one sale a week and it's now, oddly enough, making one sale a week. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling. <laughs> okay. Technically, 
if you go from HTTP to HTTPS, it's basically uh, somewhat like a side move. So uh, for sure, within a certain period, you would see a drop uh, until Google reads the whole site, no? Well, that's what I was really impressed with um, because I didn't do anything except uh, um, a um, um, an Asapi rewrite um, to, from HTTP to HTTPS, and within 24 hours, um, some some of the it has about a thousand pages indexed. With, within 24 hours, uh, some pages were HTTPS. And um, in the next, during the next question, I'll, I'll have a look uh, at uh, how, how how it's progressing. But it, it was um, yeah, I was, that was very impressive. It just seamlessly seamlessly changed, and the home page is already uh, uh, listed in Google as HTTPS. Anyway, okay, so uh, Bali, I hope that's um, what you're looking for, and. Um, our next um, is from Peter Cornish. Um, he says he has major issues with this advice. Um, he appreciate our input. He said um, that um, Google associates multiple sub-branded webs. Or no, sorry, this is the advice. Google associates multiple sub-branded websites as being from the same business, and therefore interlinking is not SEO damaging. I, uh, I've just uh, left the um, comments from the SEO questions community on the screen. Um, I made a comment um, to Peter that um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that d advice. Uh, we, we've been uh, interlinking the, the ShopSafe group of sites uh, um, since Google was a Google. Um, and um, I, I think as long as the linking is not um, for linking's sake, um, as long as it has a purpose, I don't see any reason why Googlebot um, should complain about it. Maybe we should take it off and see. At, at one stage there, uh, when I was trying to be uh, um, trying to fit in with Google, um, I did um, set those links um, to no follow. Um, but since I've decided not to try and fit in with Google, I've, I've set, put them back. Uh, um, as, as direct links, and um, they, they seem um, to be just, well, there, there seems to be zero effect either way. Any, any opinions, guys? No, it doesn't look like it. I, th well, <coughs> yeah. I think... I think, uh, I mean, we've had this discussion before. I think it all depends on, you know, can can Google make can Google tell that these are all, you know, branded, in the sense of of one kind of business. Uh, where are the links and how are they linked, and is there in is there a way for Google to tell if they are of the same business and crucially how many are these I mean is it five is it ten is it fifty I mean you know at some point Google's going to go well enough's enough uh, what their point is we don't we don't really know um, so yeah I mean there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of there's a lot of what ifs um, and without specifics uh, it's just a little bit difficult to to understand uh, but if it's five and they're all, you know, if it's five sites and they're all linking to one and you can, they're all clearly, 
differentiated as as kind of falling under the same brand, then there, sh then there should be no problem. But if we've got 50 uh, and they're all interlinking, I, I think you're going to have a problem. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's a question of how many and how. Yeah, I totally agree, Tim. Totally agree. Um, just to point out that uh, Peter Cornish updated on the on the SEO questions community on, on Google Plus and said uh, he said just to clarify, cognitive SEO rates the source pages as unnatural, um, as the organisation's links pages are just that, lots of links to their own site, and and. Then um, I mean, not that I'm putting any store by um, cognitive um, um, estimation of, of what is natural and what is unnatural, but um, it would be reasonable, wouldn't it, if, if it's just a links page, if, if it doesn't have a purpose, it might it might be bad. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, let's move on to question number three on your run list. Um, and um, it's a question from Valentina Huff, who's asked a number of questions of us recently. Um, Valentina asks, what's a good number of internal links pages um, for, uh, or, or should a website have? I really don't think that there is a, a good or a bad. You know, if you've if you've created a page, um, if you've created a page about a specific product um, that doesn't reference any other products in your site or, or or anything in your site, you may not need a link in there. If you create in a question and answer page, for example, or something else, and you're basically questioning and answering questions for every single kind of product. I mean, ideally, you would do one for each product. But let's say you, you know, you had ten products, and one question and answer was enough. Um, so you know, you might have ten, twenty, thirty coming out of that page. But it all makes sense to Google because you know you're referencing specific things and it's it's about uh, the user and it's about usability uh, etc um, I mean off the top of my head there was that one there was that one blog post that Matt Katz contributed to didn't he and I think that had like well no sorry those were actually external links they were internal so um, yeah, uh, so so it's totally besides the point. But yeah, as many as you need, or you feel that would be benefit to the user. If you have a thing that, if you mention something that you have another reference point to it within your site, that would benefit the user to see a little, you know, either a link in there or a little button saying view more here, or whatever, or see more, or view more, or learn more, and you take them to a different page. There is no problem with that. I don't think there is any specific value. It could be one, it could be a hundred, it could be ten. I mean, I don't ever see you being like a hundred on a page. That would just be mental. But um, there, I don't think there is any good or bad number there. It's what is good for your user. Think about that. Sounds um, fair enough to me. Anybody else? Okay, yeah, a question um, four on our run list uh, is from Diego Segura. Um, what kind of campaign do you recommend um, for a, a political campaign? 
Um, the campaign should work for about six months. Um, can you recommend to me any good practices uh, to make people know about it fast? We actually had a chat um, with Diego in the green room after last week's um, hangout. Um, I'm not sure who was um, still there then. W were you there, Edwin, or, or Masataki? Anybody with ideas on, on a political campaign? I must say I, I um, noticed uh, John Keyes um, from, he's the um, Prime Minister of New Zealand. Um, he's um, fairly active in social media, but I think where he let himself down um, in this last election um, was by um, not posting um, um, in between elections. Uh, he was very uh, communicative, communicative and uh, responsive in the last election. And then um, we didn't hear from him in the interim and all of a sudden he's popped up again uh, um, posting all over the place. Um, and to me, I, I, I mean, Social media users are savvy. They, 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 they know when somebody new pops up. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if um, John Keyes has been away for a while, I mean, it looks like he's going to win the election anyway, but I think that him popping up again just, just as the election was due um, gives him a semblance of falseness. Um, and, um, you know, I, I didn't think it worked for him at all. But... Anyway, for a political campaign, it's not like um, an e-commerce store where you would build up um, a trust over time, where you'd build up um, a following over time. Um, a political campaign, you, you can't advertise. Or can you advertise on AdWords for polit politics? You can, I think. Um, but it depends on, I suppose, the national election laws because I think in some places um, it's not allowed. Okay. Um, but yeah, but then you know you could have a um, perhaps the political parties or politicians themselves may not be able to purchase AdWords. That doesn't mean the supporters can't. So it might be a question of direct involvement, for example. Um, but I think that depends on each individual uh, country. But okay. I think, in Did terms of politics, sorry, in terms of politic, you know, uh, going back to the question, sort of, uh, what kind of campaign? It really depends on what kind of political campaign it is. Uh, what you trying to do. Um, you know, at the, today, people in Scotland, for example, are voting whether to become independent or not. You know, that, that, that would be a totally different one from a regular sort of election to a parliamentary seat or seat in a, um, in a chamber of representatives or something like that. So um, it depends on that. Is it a single issue? Many issues. Are you supporting a person? Are you supporting a cause? What are you trying to do? I think without um, more information, I think it's very hard to say because you know your aims are going to be different and the methods to achieve those aims will naturally be different from one to another. Yeah, and he wants, he wants it to be fast and normally if you want to uh, have a fast uh, movement or build up a community fast, uh, you normally have to take risks. Um, yeah. And you have to pay. 
Yes, yes, you have to pay indeed. You have to pay. There's no, there's no, you know, get get your your kind of microsite up, get your kind of message right, and then start start throwing the ads. You know, well, start this, paying. This political campaign, so it doesn't really matter if the discussion is on Facebook or on uh, your own uh, site. You can. Uh, 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 as long as there is a discussion uh, about your candidate or your political party, uh, you will be happy. Uh, so you probably need uh, some social media tools for this uh, to track all those uh, hashtags and mentions. Um, yeah. Or you could do astrosurfing. You try to pay people and... Um, when they make them go and post on blog comments, social media postings, newspaper comment columns, these kind of things. It'd be great if you could find a committed core of people who do it for you for free out of their own volition. But you know, if if and obviously there are ethical and moral issues with doing this kind of thing, but you know, astrosurfing happens, and I think it's used. So that's one possibility. Well, well, just like on the streets, uh, you have volunteers uh, flyering. Uh, you you can do somewhat similar uh, on Facebook, no? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, j just to be uh, sure, we, we did did agree that. Um, um, uh, it, it is okay um, to advertise on AdWords for, for politics, did we? I think well, it depends. Uh, it depends on the country. I think, as I've said, I think it really depends on the particular um, legislation in the country because some countries have very tight, specific rules about what you can do during, um, you know, X number of weeks before the polling date um, in terms of you know how much pump, you know, airwaves that you can have, how many newspaper um, or print advertisements you can um, take out, or how much money you can spend. So um, I think it's very difficult to say blanketly that it's okay or not. If it's okay in the country, then I think that's a very good way of doing things. Yeah. I also point out that on the SEA questions community, uh, um, some of our heroes that um, 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 was, you know answer the questions on our community through the week uh, have, have made um, some responses. Uh, Greg Barker and Colin Davis, uh, and oh, I see Edwin York uh, also had something to say. Um, did you? You didn't mention this teaser campaign just then, did you, did you Edwin? Uh, no, no. I was just using it as an example that uh, if you want uh, to have a, a fast campaign, uh, that it can be risky. Yeah. Mm And um, I see Diego responded, and then uh, Albert Mora also responded. Okay, uh, have we covered this? I'll take that as, as a yes. Um, our next question uh, is um, number five on our own list uh, from Alex Sam uh, on uh, Cycling Search. Uh, Alex says, um, I've used this code in my company website for site link search, um, and yet uh, um, the um, um, site link search result is not visible in, in the Google search result. If the code needs any modification, uh, I kindly modify it and send it to me. We don't actually do that, uh, Alex, um, but we'll most certainly. Uh, um, respond on, on the community. Did anybody have a look at this? No, I haven't looked at the code, but unfortunately, um, just so Alex knows, um, yeah, you might have you might have included it. That's fine, 
but it does not guarantee that your um, you know the search the search box will appear in the SERPs. Um, was it appearing before you you installed this code? AKA Google is only going to allow very high authoritative sites um, the search bar. Was it there before you decided to install this? Uh, if it was, then it should reappear, and I mean we'll have a look. Uh, we'll have a look at the code, but um, it, just because you installed it, the the tracking functionality, uh, the internal uh, side search functionality, doesn't mean that you're just going to get this uh, search result bar in your in in the search results. There was um, there was also an update to the blog post uh, last week, um, and looking at the code, you need to uh, make the search term a real search term, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, let me see if I can get a quote. Um, uh, uh, make sure that the curious input field uh, points to the same uh, string uh, that's inside the uh, curly uh, braces in the targets field. So just that single code uh, isn't helpful. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else? Okay, so um, let's um, move on, on to the next, which is a question from uh, uh, Makita Shah. Um, Makita um, says, hello everyone. Uh, I am stuck with one website. Um, she doesn't mean that she's stuck with one website. She means that one website is not performing. She said uh, it's it's a, it's a, a CAD services website which had a huge um, traffic and uh, and good keywords ranking in 2013. Uh, the website was redesigned in March and since then uh, it hasn't uh, been able to gain uh, um, neither keyword ranking uh, or traffic. At, at present, uh, its traffic is low. Um, um, could you provide uh, some suggestions on how I can improve? Um, on page is perfect uh, without any errors. Um, all redirection and everything needed uh, for on page um, is done. Um, any help is appreciated. I see that this got a huge response um, on the uh, community. Ten answers. mainly questions and answers. Well, the first thing that I think of, guys, would be a penalty. What do you think? Well, <coughs> based on what she, uh, based on what she was saying, that you know, it was doing fine. Uh, and then they they redesigned it, and then it just dipped. So, based on that, not looking at a penalty because I mean of a redesign, I'm thinking that uh, redirects were missed somewhere along the line. Where I'm just I'm just having a look, see if I can find any broken, you know. Uh, that would be the top of my list, firstly, without kind of. Ooh. What's wrong, Tim? 
Uh, well, in the, I'm just looking for some some uh, <coughs> broken links and that, and then just running along. I mean, uh, their links are not great. I mean, a lot of them I'm seeing here are from directories, forums, articles, submit articles. Well, um, so yeah, I mean, potentially a penalty there. Um, Bookmark Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, that that would be the next area to look in. But I'm just seeing if I can find any <coughs> broken. Oh, actually, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna. Refresh that. I mean, I, I I don't have any any natural um, anchor text uh, of your links. Everything is uh, everything is uh, over optimized. The name of your site is Chamonix.com. There isn't a single link for Chamonix.com. It's stuff like outsourced outsource CAD drafting, outsourcing CAD services, outsource HAVAC systems. Shemini, CAD outsourcing company, India, CAD outsource. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah, so that is a situation you need to look at. But um, I'm just looking to see if the old site was what it looked like and if we got anything broken. Well, it, it, it doesn't really read all that natural. Uh, I, it sometimes reads like uh, it's keyword stuff. Oh, oh and there is a link page. Uh, if you would like to exchange a link uh, with us, please uh, send us email to an email address with the subject exchange a link. Um, that's out of Google Skype line, so. so it, could, it could be multiple penalties, you say? Well, I, I, I think you're right about the penalty, uh, Jim. Um, that was Tim actually that um, said that. Oh, what's that, Tim? Oh, no, you said you said penalty first thoughts, and I said, well, before we go there, let's just see if it was uh, properly done before it was before we say anything. Mm. Um, but just looking at one of the things about getting old, you you forget what you said four four minutes ago. It's it's okay, Jim. We we totally understand, mate. Yeah, the, the one thing I, I'd say to Makita is, is that she's convinced that uh, um, on page is perfect uh, without any errors, but gee, it, it doesn't seem to me, I mean, I wouldn't look at that page and say it was perfect. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, it's just, um, in, in, I, I think a mistake that a lot of people make it is that. It, Instead of making a, a CAD site, um, which is a benchmark CAD outsourcing site, you know, with with all of the um, interesting reading material that would that would entail, um, they, they focus on chasing the keywords for that site, and of course um, um, that they may well optimize that so that it is optimized. To the best of that ability, but they're missing the opportunity to make a very good site. Uh, I mean, they lose sight of, of, of what they, they, they really should be doing. Mm -hmm. 
I think so, anyway. I tell you, it's really good hiding behind this cue prompter. Um, should we move on from uh, Makita's question? Have we, have we done enough? I'll record that as a yes. Uh, I have a question uh, from Jai uh, Prakash, um, who has a doubt about how to target uh, different countries. Um, Jai says, hi everyone. Uh, um, for example, I live in India and I have a website uh, in Australia. Um, the site is squarefeetcommercial.com.au. Uh, which type of work uh, will help uh, to create traffic on this site? And which type of activity should I do? Uh, please help me. Thanks. Well, normally you figure that out before you buy a domain. Uh, yeah, I see uh, SEMXE uh, suggested uh, try to list your website in local business directories, uh, improve your website's content by making it more location friendly, um, have a Google local listing with, with other local biz business listings like Bing, Yelp, etc. I don't know if Yelp but as much use in Australia. Um, I don't. I don't think uh, that business listing uh, for Australia is active. Sorry, Edwin. I know Bing has a, a, a business listing, but I don't think for Australian uh, uh, business it's open uh, yet. Uh, it was open for Canada, uh, the United States. It wasn't open for all uh, uh, countries. So. We'll have to get Tim Cabot to take that up with his mate Dwayne Forrest, sir. <laughs> maybe, maybe they changed it. Let me, uh, let me check. Uh, um, I'm just uh, a little confused here, right? Um, I live in India and have a website from Australia. So I take it, uh, is he managing the site? This is not his site as such, his business. Because this is selling Australian property and obviously leasing properties. I mean, is he just managing the site for someone? Or is he asking how to make money off this site that he bought? Or I, I, I don't really understand it. Just go back to the uh, to the big places. It is uh, open for Australia. So thanks, Edwin. Um, I, I think maybe this might be uh, an affiliate site. Um, Tim, where uh, he would um, um, earn leads and uh, um, pass them on no, for, it, for payment. No, I, I really don't think so, because I mean, in the About Us page, he's got he's got the team, the names uh, names of the team. Um, you know where that, what areas they specialised in. He's got their mobile numbers as you know. You know, uh, anyway. Okay, so m maybe Square Feet Commercial is um, um, like it, it might be his site that um, uh, these people, Wade Short, is the director and founder. Um, he he might be the client um, of um, a Joe Prakash. Maybe, maybe. 
Well, uh. he he says for example, so and then he gives that uh, URL. Uh, maybe it's yeah, not his so site. Maybe it maybe it's got nothing even to do with him. Maybe he just likes the site and thinks, well, I want to live in India, or I live in India and I would like to create something like this. I, I, I'm a little confused there. I, I wonder if um, Jai can actually just clarify those for us. Well, he does say, I have a website from Australia, so that indicates <laughs> he has a control over it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if this was your site, um, just for example, I've clicked on properties that are available to lease. Your title reads lease warehouse. Um, property management asset in reservoir. Uh, but your map is showing properties surrounding and including one in Melbourne. So I think you 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 kind of need to to just look at these titles properly uh, and see how you can segment the different properties within the specific areas that they're in. I'm going to click on Mount. Let's see if this actually works. How this works. I would try and actually see if you can list them um, in specific areas. That would make life a lot easier and a lot and, and better searchable. But I'm sure there must be that functionality in this theme that's being used. Oh, I've just had a look at Oh, yeah, you can. Right, you can search via... Okay, so I've just searched... Uh, this is not... Inner East... Melbourne. Okay, you need to configure your your titles based upon the area that is specifically being searched. So you need to reconfigure the the title that it pulls. So, for example, I'm looking at I've searched for Melbourne. Obviously, I have a Melbourne property here now. So this is technically a Melbourne landing page. But it's still the same title, same property management asset and reservoir, which I don't think is helping you. I think you, you, you do kind of need to look at some of the old pages. Uh, you've obviously got no content whatsoever. Your blog is empty. Uh, it says more info. Learn about more opportunities in Campbellfield commercial properties have to offer. Uh, I'm trying to click it. I'm getting no additional information. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think if you can just confirm exactly what the situation is. I, I just looked up um, a square feet commercial. Um, I, I think there's no doubt that this site is owned uh, by a, a Victorian uh, real estate company um, and that uh, Jai Prakash uh, um, has them as clients. So I think it's just um, differences in the language that it, uh, have caused us to be confused. I would configure your pages better uh, rather than using parameters. So I would actually have a drop down or an actual landing page for the areas that you do have properties in, or configure your title within the uh, w within the theme to to actually show the area of the property, uh, and possibly have a landing page where you can actually add some detail about Melbourne. Uh, and the areas, you know, if you have a property in that page. So, 
certainly sort that out. Um, um, I'll probably uh, look at your alts. Your alts are very good. I mean, but it's just the actual address of the property. Um, I would probably just include into your alt that whether this one's to lease or for sale. Yeah, um, just little things like that. Let's see what else. Hang on. Also in your title, for example, um, you've got Unit 30, 391 Settlement Road, blah, blah, blah. Uh, probably handy just to let people know that this is to lease. Um, Okay, um, should we uh, leave this one at, at, at that? I think we've done a good job. Um, next is a question from B. Aparte. Um, and it's titled Drive Traffic to the Main Website Using Other Domains. This is a really um, long question. I'll, I'll attempt to read it. If I die in the meantime, uh, I expect one of you guys to take over. Um, uh, B. Aparte starts, Hi, I would like your opinion on the following. We have a large company website and we own about 50 domain names which have some of the major keywords um, that we would like to rank for in them. How could we use uh, these domains to drive more traffic to the main website or give an impulse to our business? Some scenarios. A, um, 301 them all to the main domain. Advantage, if any have links to them, they will add up to enforce the, the main domain. Uh, I'm not so sure about that, although it is a well-known ploy. Um, the drawback, if they, have, uh, bank bad, if they have bad links, they could destroy uh, um, the, the main domain. Um, B, make them parked uh, with uh, little text on them and a link to the appropriate page on the main domain. Uh, advantage, links to the main domain. Uh, disadvantage, seen as a link ring, doorway pages and destroying the main domain. Um, but um, uh, a late 2012 video for Matt Cutts um, leaves room to do so. Ooh, I don't know about that. Um, okay, uh, please watch Should I Keep a Domain Parked Without Content Before I Launch the Website, in which he advises to put some lines of text on a parked domain. I think we really should define the difference between you know, what's known as a parked domain um, and what Matt Cutts was talking about, uh, putting the site up with a few words about um, about the site that's coming, um, because uh, I, I'm fairly certain that there is a, a Google algorithm which specifically uh, uh, deep sixes um, park domains. Um, C, uh, make 50 really informative pages on the 50 extra domains and link them to the main domain. Partly follow, partly no follow perhaps. D, make 50 microsites with good content addressing the main keyword of the domain and linking to the main domain. He's run out of options, uh, pluses and minuses. Um, and E, 
make uh, four or five microsites with three to five pages linking to the main domain. And um, 301, the other 45 domains to these microsites, avoiding direct linking by possible uh, um, penalised downgraded domains um, to the main domain. F, doing nothing with them, which seems to be a waste of money and opportunities. Uh, kind regards, uh, um, be apartheid. Um, can I say first that um, uh, um, doing nothing with them is not such a bad plan uh, if, if it's stopping uh, somebody from gaining a foothold um, on, on what you're doing. But, um, gee, some of those um, options that I saw there, uh, um, I, I think sometimes we can get to be so clever that we outsmart ourselves. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I see. Uh, some, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that I would do. But anyway, um, I'd love to know what you guys have to say. Right, well, let's run through these. <clears throat> Scenario B, 301 them all to the main domains. Uh, so I'm assuming you these aren't new domains. Some are new, some are part purchased, some are sub expired. Well, you need to do some, you need to just double check what links are on them, okay? Um, and then 301 them. Okay, that, that would be a perfectly fine scenario. Uh, why would you go, in, uh, anyway, okay, I'm just getting part. Make them parked with little text on them, that's just not going to happen, okay? Um, <clears throat> if, you, if, you, if you park them and you actually add text to them, you know, and, and even present a link to you, it's just, it, that, that's a bad idea. Now, make 50 really informative pages on the 50 extra domains and then link them to the main domain. Uh, same again, we're going, you know, you say partly follow, partly no follow, blah, blah, blah. I think you're just overthinking this completely. If you're going to spend time, money, actually creating 50 informative pages when all of them ultimately lead back to one site. Why don't you create the 50 informative pages on the main site? Because that is your main company, the main brand, the main one that needs exposure and needs to make the money. So why are you creating an, an overwhelming rigmarole to this? Okay, so that's C. D, make 50 microsites with good content addressing one, you just put that great content onto your site, nicely categorized. 50 categories for your 50 products, right? Make four or five microsites with three or five pages linking to the main domains and three or one, the other 45 domains to these microsites. You're overthinking this, man. You're just really overthinking this. Um, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. I, I had a client here, way bigger than you, okay. We had 250 exact match domains, all with 30 to 40. I mean, they were high quality sites, all individual, all about things, right? All pretty much linking at some point back to the main brand site. Panda came along two, three years ago probably a little bit of penguin here or there and just wiped it all out. Right. So, scenario. What did we do? We basically redesigned the main site, right, incorporating all those 200 products back into it with some serious content, right? So each one had a lengthy weight and would pretty much rank on its own that particular page for that vertical or that product it was offering. And you know what? We actually just ditched all the other 250 domains. And after re-indexing, because of the weight of content on there, we also did redirect some, you know, if we had picked up out of the, all the 250, if there had been any really good links, those links were then redirected to that specific category in that page. 
and the site now is pretty much dominating and we're talking only within a year the site is pretty much within position five page one for pretty every 200 ones of those products so job done and there was no weird 301 ins and blah blah blahs it was only the quality links 301 to those specific pages dropped all the other 250 domains all their content everything like that and concentrated it into that main site that needed to make the money um, another scenario um, fashion brand fashion brand has eight so it's not the same as 50 um, fashion brand had eight fashion blogs divided into eight separate genres within fashion Panda came along two years ago, didn't like what was happening, and a lot of them got slapped. Also, it was how do you maintain fresh quality content on those other eight blogs when the one particular one was doing really well and had a lot of engaged bloggers sending in stuff and communicating, whereas the others was, well, how do we resource it and how do we manage all the content creation for all those different ones? Uh, we basically just reincorporated 301 them all, any of the internal relevant pages on those with 301 to the relevant pages in there and they were all just redirected back into the one that singular blog now has over 150,000 visits a month and happy days uh, I think you're really overthinking this um, just think what you have the capability of doing um, and just build one really great flaming site if you have you know a couple of some domains which are off key to your main business that but that you really like to use and you know that you really think would be an opportunity that you kind of testing the waters for um, then yeah by all means create a couple of microsites um, with those domains um, to test the waters but obviously you need you can't just create them and let them happen you need to work at them like any other site you need to build a social presence for them build a brand brand presence for them um, and then of course you know have a page on there which details that it's part of this main company and you know a link through to it etc uh, do it the right way um, if, if you're going to do it like that top answer Tim absolutely top answer we could be brothers you know <laughs> All right, mate. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yes, yes, Mr. Apate. Um, um, and I see also on the SEA Questions community on Google Plus, this is what Daniel Lloyd Barrett said. He said, I would rather create 50 new pages on the main website uh, uh, optimized for the keywords you are targeting and then try and get some quality backlinks to them. So we could be triplets uh, here, Tim. Um, is it, this would be quicker, easier, and a no-risk option. The extra content will also help boost the visibility of the main domain. I have tried most of the scenarios above, and the gains were only temporary and eventually caused more problems. Um, it, I, I wonder if he tapped your brain before he uh, wrote that, uh, Tim. I'm right. um, We're triplets, separated at birth, buddy. <laughs> All right. Um, look, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I guess this is probably not the answer that you wanted to hear. Um, um, but to sum up, um, I, I think um, F, and I don't think F is a waste of, of money. Uh, um, it, it, uh, if you if uh, if you're stopping somebody else from gaining a foothold uh, on your brand, uh, it's perfectly um, normal to to uh, um, buy buy up the, those those domains and keywords. Um, and if you're certain that those, uh, I mean, it's pretty easy to establish whether a, a website is toxic or not. Um, you could um, uh, 301 them to the main domain, but um, yeah, as I say, I, I'm, I'm sorry that this is probably not the answer you wanted to hear, but that's that's the best we've got. Um, next, we have a, a question um, from um, uh, Bali uh, Ravi Kumar, 
Have we covered this one? Question nine. Um, Bailey asks, uh, can anybody suggest a good and better tool for competitor backlinks um, and uh, um, analysis of the website, uh, um, a paid um, um, tool? On the SEA questions community on Google Plus, SEMXC said uh, Moz's uh, Open Site Explorer. Um, that's one. Um, I should point out that um, um, SEMrush um, it gives um, the uh, panelists here on Dumb SEO Questions uh, uh, access, free access to the uh, Guru uh, tool on, on SEMrush. Um, and um, that's, that's an excellent tool for um, um, check, keeping a check on, on um, competitors um, ranking. Um, Backlink section I think could be better um, but um, they're, they're working on it all the time and um, certainly uh, um, their uh, site audit feature uh, will give you a, a good uh, analysis uh, of your website and uh, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd recommend it and, and it's not because they give it to us free. Um, anybody else? Oh, I see William Rock in, in the chat here um, says uh, that um, his favourite tool is SEMrush and an unbounce. Uh, Edwin Young in the chat says web me up. Um, web, web me up, is, is, is that um, still fully functional? Um, I thought they um, stopped part of that. I think for uh, backlinks, uh, uh, they're still functional, but uh, they had uh, the rank tracker uh, that didn't really work. I think. But for backlinks, what me up is uh, is quite good. It's a cool piece of coding, isn't it? it? Works really. I mean, it's really slick. Um, and William Rock uh, says majestic SEO for a full uh, um, backlink report. Uh, for ranking uh, Sembrush, uh, it's quite nice. But for backlinks, uh, I would choose uh, something like WebMeUp or Majestic SEO. Uh, Moss was mentioned too, right? Yeah. Looks like Tim is resting on his laurels after that brilliant answer a moment ago. You must have gone to get coffee. All right. Um, will we move on, Edwin? Sure. Okay. Uh, question 10 on our run list tonight uh, from Pablo Cano. Um, are these con considered duplicate content? And he gives a couple of uh, URLs, um, um, which I'm sure we'll, we'll be looking at. Um, he said, a question for you all, if I publish jobs on my website that are already on other websites, um, could it be considered duplicate content? For example, these Spanish websites, could, could they be uh, considered duplicate content? Goes on to say, uh, what would you do? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And we had uh, um, an answer on um, the SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, Martino Mosner said, um, they're near duplicate content, same content, different website, uh, mostly user-generated content, so, so it's not really possible to make it totally unique. Um, my two cents, uh, I would take any reasonable effort in order to make a page more useful to the user um, compared to the competition. Um, i.e. the first website has more ads than the second, which instead of having a lot of actionable links in the sidebar, um, maybe too many, um, if the users um, will perceive some value, then the search engines will understand it in the long run, um, looking at the, the backlinks and user behaviour data. Well, I'm trying to load those two pages, but it takes quite a long time. Uh, um, 
maybe that's a suggestion that uh, it's not really a user-friendly um, site. <laughs> Is it loading for you, Jim? Uh, because I have two blank pages. I have a problem with bandwidth um, when we run these hangouts, Edwin. I, I haven't um, tried to open the pages. Uh, I see William Rock in the chat uh, um, in the hangout here uh, um, said that he can't load it either. But it is quite common in uh, uh, the, in the jobs uh, industry to have the same content across multiple platforms and sites and what have you. So I don't know. I don't work in that uh, particular industry. Uh, sorry, I was uh, I was on a call. Um, so this is from question ten, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I've I've one of my early sites is is an actual job site which. Uh, does aggregate and obviously the employers do aggregate the same thing out to different sites. Uh, I know it's a pain in the ass but what I have asked them to do for mine is if um, specifically they want to post onto ours to at least change the first introductory paragraph so that although I might have the same contact details and uh, the majority of the overall job description, I do have a slightly different introduction to it, which does has benefited the site. I mean, it took a long time for people to get to it because ideally they just want to click one, you know, one button and then they download their job to 20, uh, you know, 20 job sites. Um, but no, it's not... This thing of duplicate content, think of it more as a filter. Um, so in the sense that uh, Google sees the same job on five sites, that they they will they will display them. It just really depends on what kind of order. Um, and if all of your content is just primarily duplicated, um, then then yes, you, you, your entire site's results and where they are displayed in the search results uh, will be affected. Uh, the way you can bolster that is one, like I said, change the introduction paragraph so the bulk of it still stays the same but try and change it up a little bit. Two, uh, on your blog or on your news section, try and create a, uh, um, you know, obviously some unique and original content on a regular basis that does the get kind of break up the duplication of all your pages on your site so a search engine would see over time that it'll be building up that oh actually okay yeah we understand this they do aggregate but look there are a site in their self which do produce regular unique content that is being read that people are finding useful and clicking through to the other specific sections, etc. Um, so the site is not all about copy and paste. It does actually provide something a little bit more different. Um, you know, give that a bash. Yeah, another good answer, Tim. William, um, are you having trouble unmuting there, mate? Oh, no, 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 it's okay. Don't be sorry. Uh, we're, the, the cameraman app um, is um, playing up a little bit. Um, and Edwin had exactly the same problem. 
I'd try um, um, exiting and ca uh, coming on again. Edwin, uh, do you have any advice for William? Uh, what did you do to clear the problem? Uh, you did that. Um, I thought it was my end, so I rejoined and rejoined. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think um, to tr try um, um, exiting and rejoining, William. Um, I think that's the only thing that will cure it. Okay, um, moving on um, um, from Pablo's question uh, to um, Luke uh, Chaffee's um, on markup schema for site links in search engine results pages. Um, Luke says, hi all, I have a question for everyone. Um, site links have been around for a while now and I've always seen them when, when the search is for a brand's name. However, today uh, when looking at the rankings for one of the campaigns we manage, we noticed that there were site links uh, in the number one and two positions uh, in google.com.au um, for the search term dance costumes. Um, while uh, um, both um, um, of the, um, I'm sorry, I've lost my, lost my space there. Um, while, while both the companies have dance costumes uh, in their title, and, and so do all uh, the other results, and so I don't see why it warrants the sites to be relevant uh, um, by, by their brand name. Firstly, has anyone seen this before, screenshot just about to show? And secondly, are there any markup schema that allow you to do this? Um, and uh, he said none that he knows of. Um, how about it, guys? Sorry for the bad read, by the way. I'm, I'm just learning how to drive this thing. This drew um, five responses uh, from our heroes on the uh, SEA questions community. Lawrence Snow uh, came back with, with, with a statement um, from um, Google. Um, I'm not sure if this is really uh, applicable to this particular um, question um, because it's not the normal site links that he's referring to. Um, and then what ensued was a conversation between uh, um, Luke and uh, Lawrence. Um, Dimitri Grant um, had um, uh, this comment to make um, on the SEA questions community on Google Plus. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Um, help me out here, guys. Well, those um, those those little site links in position one and two are generally uh, a small selection of the site links that are shown when you search in just for so, for example, curtain call costumes. Curtain call costume. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, it's different. I have site links, but not the ones which are shown in. Yeah, I mean, typically you can't influence those site links. They tend to be shown based upon what Google feels will be best for um, the user and search query. Um,
Anybody else? The um, the the Weissman one you can see um, you can see those uh, those those um, snippets appearing as their site links for Weissman costumes. Uh, curtain call. I think Google wants to display it because they're you know an authority, um, but their site is a little bit balked. So Google has. <laughs> Picked um, some of the more relevant pages, which they thought, like, I mean, open flipbook. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, they've they've tried to choose it as best as possible. But the Weissman, you can clearly see that those are the specific um, pages that are displayed when you're searching for actual Weissman costumes. But yeah, I mean, normally site links are, you know, decided by Google. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. Okay, thanks, Tim. Right, moving on uh, to question 12 on our um, run list. Um, this is a, an interesting question from Kashama Gupta. Um, how to track the conversion and traffic from email marketing uh, through analytics? Um, Kashama says, uh, I, I want to track the email campaign at my site i.e. Uh, bestshops.com. Uh, I hope you haven't tried to drop, drop a link there, Kashama, because we'll have to uh, um, do something about that. Um, so anyone, can anyone help me in how to track uh, the conversion and traffic uh, from email marketing uh, through analytics? Jim, can you hear me? Certainly can, William. Thank goodness you're here. I'm back. Well, you know, it's a fun little mic, but I'll tell you what, it's a pain in the butt. So, you're going to have to deal with me on this mic. <laughs> uh, just before you go on, uh, uh, William, um, I notice we've just been joined by Canada's uh, leading SEO, Baruch Lebunski. Uh, how are you, man? Nice. Yep. Um, Okay, so sorry for that distraction, guys. Um, uh, Baruch, um, we've been having trouble with the uh, mute switch. Um, um, for some reason or other, uh, it's um, not um, not working as people log on. So you may have to try uh, logging on a, a couple of times, but we're glad to see you. Um, it's not us, it's, it's the uh, software. Um, Okay, um, all right. Uh, I, I see that um, Dave Elliott, uh, I'm, I'm just about to look up this bestshops.com to see if that is um, um, uh, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Kashama's uh, name. Um, because uh, you know we don't want people dropping links in our on, on our community. We, we we do our very 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 best to keep our room clean. Um, Hello there. So we just don't um, just don't. It's just not an acceptable practice, Kashama. So uh, if you find yourself um, exited, um, uh, contact one of our moderators and, and they'll put you back on. But please don't do it again. Hello there. Hey Baruch, how you doing, buddy? Good, good. You're looking so, well. Uh, nice to take a break sometimes from this entire week and uh, join the hangout. I mean, I'm trying, you know. Mm-hmm. How are you guys doing? Yeah, no, we're all good. Tim's just back um, from looking after Russian oligarchs uh, in, in the uh, subcontinent. Yeah, I'm just a bit upset of what uh, has been going on here in Toronto. I uh, I was the webmaster for Rob Ford, and uh, he's just going undergoing right now chemo treatment. And uh, but you know, anyhow, big article coming about me, and and it's it's going to be huge. We're going to release some uh, statistics of how the campaign went. I was basically um, in charge of his website for nine and a half months, so. Um, 
yeah, it would be interesting for all SEOs around the world to, uh, to uh, hear about that. You didn't get him started on crack cocaine, did you? Uh, no, I wasn't the one. It was his sister. <laughs> but uh, no, with all jokes aside, uh, I mean, you know, it, 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 I mean, so, uh, that's, I guess, the only way to increase your brand, right? Awareness. Just like uh, Kim Kardashian did it, and I mean, he's not a bad guy, as people think, but it's the media, you know? But, uh, yeah, um, I'll keep you guys uh, posted on that one, and uh, just, uh, it'll be an interesting read for a lot of guys. Hasn't he withdrawn from the race, though? Um, is, yeah. is, is, so this you know, is why I can talk now. This is why I can talk. I mean, he's withdrawn from the race, and, uh, you know, um, at this point in time, uh, we'll see where it goes, how things go, and uh, if everything is good, uh, according, I mean, yesterday they revealed what he has, so uh, if everything, uh, you know, if he can win, then he'll become a counselor, and that's about it, but yeah, he's withdrawn from the race and his brother's taking over. Right. I, I have to point out that Masataki Wasa said in the chat, uh, he wants me to say that I, he has nothing to do with anything potentially libelous that uh, might be said uh, during this hangout. Okay. Yeah, disclaimer, I mean, it's all done, so, but, uh, no, I mean, I, I just wanted to say that... Uh, this is uh, what is happening here in Toronto. It's uh, complete chaos. But uh, yeah, we'll go back to uh, question 12. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. W William Rock, um, um, the floor is yours. Come on. Wow, this thing's a nightmare today. I tell you, Google, we got to fix this thing. This is driving me nuts. All right. Uh, get started on, what, what am I on the floor for? I, th I thought I interrupted you uh, as um, um, uh, Baruch joined us. And, uh, I, was, I was just calling him out in the chat. He's, he's going to be the next whistleblower. Is that what you meant? No, no, I thought you had, had uh, something to offer uh, for... Uh, Kashami Gupta uh, on his uh, question regarding uh, email marketing. I was actually going back to the other one with the um, job site, but this one I didn't get a chance to look at. I was I was trying to get in on the job one before because I work in that space quite a bit, but unfortunately I just don't have enough looking at this person's site. I've been in the chat quite a bit. So, my apologies. I'll get back on on the on the questions. I promise. Okay. Um, ah, it's um, I've, I've I've been misreading this too. It, it's Kishama Gupta, uh, and um, um, a most attractive young lady. It looks like um, uh, as I'm looking at her, I'm dropping links on our uh, nice community. Well, for okay. Um for email marketing, uh, you can have those nice images uh, that uh, can be tracked if, if people uh, choose to open their mail with the images inside. You can track that uh, because they have to download that image from your site or from somewhere else. And you can add uh, the campaign, uh, uh, what was it, UTM underscore. Uh, some code, <laughs> some parameters in uh, in the image the URL. So I think the UTM code is, is a great example of, of tracking capabilities because it's pushing data from that link, from that email, into your Google Analytics. So that, that will actually come under your, um, was it campaigns tab on your left hand uh, side campaign within analytics and I think that's really helpful because everything that you're sending out in an email regardless if it's 
uh, from any one of the big vendors out there that have tracking capabilities, you want to have the secondary level of tracking. Once it gets into your site, where did they go from there? And how did they get there with Pathwise? So we always look at a keyword coming in, but the same thing goes with an email marketing blast. You could do, you could put a UTM code on a lot of different things. But at the same time, is you know, it goes back to testing, split testing, and seeing what works and what doesn't work. As you're sending out those emails, you're going to constantly improve on your template, your design, uh, making sure that it looks not like a spammy email. Make sure it's got its call to actions, what it is up front, because otherwise it's just going to go right to the trash. Um, you know, don't don't hit them up every uh, every week. You know, figure out what your audience likes, and you can see that through the analytics. You're going to see if they bounce, a bunch of them bounce as they're getting to your website or your email. Uh, a lot of statistic analytics that you can actually pull from that to really improve your bottom line and, and get better conversions. I mean, we've done some crazy uh, campaign marketings. I mean, I've done some insane ones. You know, mm -hmm. sending people like fifteen thousand uh, emails at the same time. I mean, we had like. Yeah, like William said, like around four thousand bounce. Mm -hmm. um, but tools. it's very, very, it's very cool. Like checking out the analytics. I mean, it's just amazing. Do you see third party tools by chance? Like huh? when you guys are doing like email blasts, like the big ones where you're split testing and stuff. Do you utilize uh, additional tools that you're putting into the email uh, program, third party app, uh, built in APIs or anything like that? To uh, no, I mean, uh, well, certain ones, yes, but certain uh, clients prefer to use uh, different, like, you know, a famous uh, one out there um, that already has all that in place. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see, you know, of course, how many people clicked, how many people on didn't click, how many people, you know, um, you can see, like, the that's good data. I mean, that is so fantastic that you're getting that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, like, I like the part of how many people clicked. I mean, because then from there, you're going to the direct, uh, you know, directly into the... Um, Goal page, yeah. Directly into the analytics, and then you can see, okay, they went to that specific page, you know, and then they bought, you know, 50, you know, uh, whatever it is, vacuum cleaners, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I love that. And basically, the, I think the next level that I've been testing lately, um, I use constant contact quite a bit. That's what my clients yeah. seem to prefer. Uh -huh. And then what I'm actually doing is uh, is doing a split test on my links. Um, so when I send out the email, what I'm utilizing is Unbounce. Um, yeah. And Unbounce actually comes into play where I can split that traffic. Uh, right. from the and so just like I would do it for a paid advertisement, I can do it as well in a... In a you know, whatever I was doing, I could do it on a Twitter thing, but send it to a specific landing page, but that landing page is on a you know, subdomain that's controlled by Unbound, so to say. Right. And then you can target your audience and say, okay, I sent this email out, but they clicked on a link, and maybe it was a landing page of your normal website, but maybe that didn't convert. You got a bunch of bounces, and then you can split test it to that exact same campaign that you know you've got high bounce, take that, that same one and turn it into a testing you know, copy it in the beat, make some tweaks to it, and test it. Um, the problem, the problem yeah. we are going here in Toronto is that we can't do this anymore. We have uh, the new email, the Canada Cat Spam. I don't know if you heard about it. It it, it yeah. got launched in August. So I we have to be very careful, and uh, we have to get everybody's consent now. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a tough one. And I, I see that one also coming to the United States, too. I think it's going to be a globalized... Uh, oh, effort. man. But, you know... It's just because, you know, it starts in one place, it just ends up everywhere else, you know. Yeah. You know, it's something we have to think about as marketers going forward in the next, you know, five years at least. Yeah. You know. it's, it's kind of you, guys, you, you guys don't use uh, an uh, image uh, to track if uh, an email is opened? Well, but most of the tools already have that built in. I mean, you're, yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. It's just a, a one pixel tracking cookie. I think with normal yeah. results. I think last uh, uh, last year Gmail uh, started caching uh, uh, the images, and thereby uh, we're not getting the information uh, or the tracking from that particular mail. Well, when you so use it, know if it, when you use an image in an email and you're trying to have it as a clickable link, like a call to action button. You know, that, that link that you're tracking is basically going to have the UTM code that, that's going to say, you know, 
tracking or a call to action clicked, and then you can. No, those um, I was I was I was searching this, and uh, for example, Mailchimp uh, used an invisible uh, graphic uh, in the bottom of uh, the HTML email. Uh, they call it open trucker graphic. So that's a yeah. unique uh, a unique image for every mail email you send, and thereby uh, you can track it. I'm pretty sure you can track uh, the images uh, through Google Analytics too. Now, with Mailchimp, do they also have the uh, capability for heat maps? I think that tracking or that tracking variable or image uh, for each person also has uh, heat maps overlays. I'm not sure. Not. I could be wrong. I might be thinking of another tool, but uh, I'm thinking that Mailchimp actually has that functionality in the advanced function and the uh, page, high end paper. I'm not sure. But. All right. Okay. Um, sorry, I was just doing a little bit of clerical. Um, we right to move on to question 13? Okay. Um, this is a question from Rod Farrell regarding bounce rate. Um, Rod asks, if a site provides a lot of information on the home page, um, resulting in less clicks to find information, um, will this um, result in a higher bounce rate? Sorry, just one sec. I, if a site provides, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, different things can uh, all of us can agree, right, on this one. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, sure, yeah, the pounds rate would increase, of course. I mean, if there's not, uh, it depends what he means by a lot of information. Well, you have to you have to really go back to his analytics, though. You, I mean, you can't yeah. really answer, nobody can really under, uh, answer that question accurately without having the stats in front of us from historical data to today, and what changes they may have made on their home pages versus internal pages. What I find a lot of people doing is they do, you know, multiple tests all at once. They change their home page and then they make a couple internal pages to their about page or whatever else. But they they do it all at once and they don't know what thing worked and what didn't. And so it's little baby steps on testing. Grab a page that you know is high, it has a, you know high bounce, so sort by you know highest bounce ratio in your um, analytics by page, and then sort by go into the page itself and look at it to see, okay, well it's bouncing because maybe I have crappy graphics or my content is just not even formatted or you know it basically scares them away, <laughs> or you have malware on that page. Who knows? Uh, there could be a number of different things that create that bounce rate, but then you have to really go back into your analytics and, and create separate funnel reports to understand how that happened. So you can quickly go back in your shortcuts and say, with this funnel report, I can go quickly analyze the page that I'm making the modification to and uh, watching the, the stats. Now, if you want to do it a little bit faster, if you don't have a lot of traffic to your site, do it with paid advertising. So same thing, same concept, grab a page, you know it's highly bouncing, toss it in to uh, a program like Unbounce, create a copy of it, start testing it. See what works, then put that what you've learned back onto your master page. See if your bounce rate goes down then. You'll see a pretty dif uh, different request or um, different signal because you're also doing multiple things at one time, which is improving your quality score overall. So basically you might have started with a 2 out of 10 and now because you've made some different changes and tweaks that your customers and visitor experience has gone up, now you get a little bit more love and maybe you've moved up to a six or a seven. Um, so there's all these different benefits of testing it, but if you don't test it and you don't have enough traffic to test it, then you know, if you've got four people visiting your site per day, you can't split that traffic in half. You know, there's not enough data there. So that's yeah. me. Yeah, Unbounce can help totally, yeah. And I'm not sponsored by Unbounce in any way, so I just, I've used the tool uh, since 2007, 2000, yeah, about 2007, 2008, 
and it's it's been uh, one of my go-to tools for most of my high-end uh, or larger uh, paid advertising clients. Where you know some of them I'm that man like the holidays I'll be managing up to about with one client two million dollars to spend. Uh, so I have to be very accurate on my conversion rates. Um, otherwise, we just don't sell through the holidays. But yeah, but, it's a great uh, endorsement, though. Well, it's you know it's a testimonial, I guess you could say, because you know, just like SEM Rush, I mean, I've been uh, part of SEM Rush. Well, not part of it. I've been using their tool since the creation date. I think of when they announced it at Webmaster World. Yeah. Uh, and so basically, I've been a beta tester multiple times, and I've used it here and there. But I tell you what, the new Site Auditor tool, I love it. You know, it's what fast. about the similar web? Do you like it? The which one? The similar web. I haven't played with that one yet. I have to. You know, I, I actually have tried almost every tool out there. I think, but I don't think that one I've actually tried yet. Yeah. So check it out. If you're if you're saying so, you like it? Yeah, it's good. Okay, because I've actually. Uh, I see him rush is still like you know uh, in the top three there for me. Like you were saying. I mean, I only use three different tools in their thing. One is I look at the uh, you know if you type in the word like pizza for you know word a word match you can quickly identify what the market looks like you know and yeah. then cost analysis. So when you're in front of a client per se, you can quickly identify right then and there what it's going to cost them because when they ask you oh what is it going to cost me? Well, normally you'd have to go through and do all your research, create an Excel, and then come back and, and it was so much work. Well, this takes out a lot of the you know effort. Of having to spend our time doing all the research, sure. when it's right here, and we can work faster with a client. So it's like, oh yeah, here it is. Let's go through it right now. Let's jump into your paid advertising campaign. Let's play around with some of these campaigns. Now let's test these little words. So, you know, it, it it brings the client in so they can understand it a little easier because they can quickly identify with these reports, the dashboards, simple to use. The other tool that I use a lot is the um, uh, position report, and it's basically the lost rank report is where I normally spend most of my time. Yeah. Uh, for the fact that, and you see most of my tutorials uh, around why, but uh, when you actually start looking at, you know, when you resort to negative twenties, like position loss negative twenty, you don't want to look at the negative ones or twos; those are like not. The, when you start looking at mass numbers of negative twenties, you can identify and click out. You know, open up the screen; and it gets a. Uh, Little icon, you don't have to leave back the. You have to go back to the dashboard. It opens a new window. You can explore what that page got hit by. Was it panda? Was it penguin? Uh, was it a pigeon? Was it an unknown update? Who knows? But basically, you can quickly identify the graphs. But you see, William, for that one, I use uh, also to identify if it was penguin or panda. Um, I mean, I really like barracuda. Yeah, Barracuda is fantastic. I, well, I love honestly, on, on that time, you know, I rave about it. You know, like mm -hmm. I really think that they're really solid at that in that specific. So, for well, that area, I would use that tool. We've been working with tools for so long. We know what we had in the past, and we know exactly. what what it stopped doing and why it stopped doing. It's like yeah. go back into like keyword research tools. I mean, like yeah. uh, Market Samurai, or you know, the list goes on. There's all sorts of fun tools out there that gave us all this data. But now you, you really don't need it. You've got, I mean, the, the four go-to tools I've got is Unbalanced, SEM Rush, Google Webmaster Tools, and Google Analytics. That's it. It's all I need anymore. I have yeah. the information of Webmaster Tools on my ranking, so yeah. I, get, I know my ups and downs. I can download the Excel spreadsheet report so I can actually do long-term uh, graph analysis with whatever, if I want to run an access database on it, or whatever mass query that I want to do with an Excel, I can do... Any for, anything for the client to show them what they want, and then show them uh, reassure that back in analytics, and show right. them you know why why are we making these changes, and how how are they actually improving our site? Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I teach that every month. So every meeting that I do with these clients, it's a, it's not on Google Plus. It's actually on Go to Meeting still, but it develops. That's an easier platform for most of these people. You know, they're getting used to Google Plus and Hangouts. And most uh, most CEOs don't want to even get on Hangouts yet because they're like, oh, well, I don't want my information being shared across the platform. But I think that brings up the new Hangout, which is the Enterprise Hangout, which I'm very excited to try, uh, which is in Google Apps. So I guess you get some really cool additional features uh, such as uh, SSL encryption 
and then you can actually embed third-party uh, companies that have even better layer of protection for your video streaming. So I'm very excited to see where that goes with uh, Chromebox. You know, we have Chromecast, but now we have Chromebox coming out. Sorry, I'm taking up all the time. Uh, I'll, I'll stop blabbing. That's okay. I mean, I think Chromecast is uh, an amazing thing for 40 bucks. Oh, absolutely. And the, the uh, Chromebox, I believe, is only, what, 349 bucks, And that's supposed to... We all use all the, the video broadcasting stuff in all of our conference rooms. When you go into any of the biggest uh, convention or conference rooms for large corporations, 500 up, uh, they all have video conferencing on in there, and basically they're, they're basically spending a fortune just to have that. Whereas this new technology is going to be super fast, super you know, super reliable, and uh, I'm excited. So a round of applause to Jim. Uh, we're on an enterprise app right now. He's saying. Not really. Yes, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, that's, guys, um, we've been using them since our, we set it up for our hundredth episode, and we've been using uh, fifteen seat hangouts um, since then. Uh, the only thing is we. We haven't had 15 seats, uh, 15 people to fill the seats yet, uh, but I'm looking forward to that. So, Jim, based off that, so you have the uh, the, the Google Apps. What what made you choose that way versus going like a Microsoft 360 for your company? Well, uh, to be honest, uh, I use uh, I, I've had a, a Google Apps account because um, we have a, a, a number of clients that um, use. Um, Google Apps, and, and also uh, um, we quite often uh, um, do migrations from from Google Apps to uh, Office 365. So uh, it's useful to me to have a Google Apps account. So it's it's good to know both because I have a couple companies that are thinking about going 360, and I'm like, okay, so all of your stuff's over on Google. And they're like, well, we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But then cross compatibility between sharing calendars and things like that, Microsoft and Google still butt heads. It'd be nice one day when they stop butting heads and just get to get along. Sounds like politics. That's never going to happen. All right. And now we got Apple playing in the game, too. Did you see the uh, version 8.0 that it downloaded on everybody's phones yesterday that allows uh, all sorts of the same capability with picture editing and video editing? Uh Sounds very similar to Google Plus. So. Well, it's going to be a tough battle ahead, you know. Yeah, I'm a, I'm still a, a uh, Apple fan because I mean I'm sitting right here with a MacBook Pro and I've got a, a iMac, big screen iMac in, in the uh, office, but uh, my phone is a, a Nexus Five. My watch will be a 360. I'm shutting up now. Okay, so have we covered the, the bounce rate um, yeah, for I think, um, I, Rod Farrell? I think we did really well with that. Okay. Um, question 14 on our run list tonight uh, is from Andrea, and Andrea Matane. Um, do Facebook page reviews have an, insult, an impact on uh, Google search engine results pages? No. Um, not, yeah, go no. ahead. Not at this point. No, I mean, I have uh, a client who's really obsessed with that um, in a cleaning area business, and no, not at all. I think it depends on where you are. I don't think it's going to have an impact on your SERPs. I think it's going to actually have more of an impact on your conversions. Um, for example, if I'm, let's go pizza, you know, I'm going to have people on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, all those different areas. So do I have to do all those? No. Um, but if I want to target my other clients and, and reach out a little bit further, then yes. But I wouldn't look at it as a, a search ranking signal. I mean, you kind of look at uh, the capabilities that you know, we've talked about in the past, which is uh, the capabilities of scraping the data that Google, or sorry, that Google would really want to be able to get into and understand from the uh, Facebook side of things. But I think it's still very difficult for, for Google to do that, even though they can scrape the tops, they can you know, connect the dots and everything else. But I think it also goes back to a little bit of semantic search um, technology, going back to machine learning. It's going to still look for points of interest. 
where are you authoritative in? Um, if you're just going out and trying to market on Facebook, I don't think that that's going to really help you connect the dots. Uh, you have to think about it a little different way and, and think of it more of a visitor engagement opportunity. And if, if you don't engage back with these guys, but you're just pushing a bunch of stuff on your Facebook, that, that sends the wrong signal anyway. So if you're going to do it, do it right. Don't just have, go half cocked in it. And, and this is this is it. And so, like, you got that. I mean, you can see an example on Google Plus how it used to. Do you remember how it was pushing uh, data from the Yellow Pages and Yelp and incorporating like Kudzu and all these other guys into Google Plus? That's just another example, like how what it's doing now. I mean, now it's going to be you know the patent from what yesterday uh, or whatever two days ago. They're going to start getting signals from TV now. Yeah, they're going to get stuff from everything. I mean, they've already got the signals. It's just a matter of actually implementing them into a full yeah. swing algorithm for the public. Um, because That's those have all been, we've all been testing that kind of stuff in the back end as beta testers. Uh, I'm sure you get all that stuff that you know, I get as you know, Google kind of shoves things out there and says, try it. <laughs> um, yeah. we either this, this may seem like a silly question, but... Um, uh, do Google Facebook page reviews have an in, in, in impact on Google search engine results pages? I, I think that goes back to, you know, if it's a review, it's still looked at as a review. It may not be on a review site. You know, it's like, uh, for example, what we just kind of talked about with SEM Russian inbounds. In my experience, it was more of a testimonial, but this testimonial that I just gave is in a form of a, of a hangout, which is in video which then will be converted into t uh, to audio, then converted into text, and the machine learning algorithm will study that. Um, but at the same level, is it's just a part of connecting the dots. I think if the people are saying good things about you elsewhere and not just Google, you, know, you need to have a little bit of it. depends on your business again. It could be completely irrelevant. If you're just a small mom and pop that doesn't really have the time, don't go for the effort of all of that yet. But if all of a sudden reviews start showing up, comment back. Make sure you engage back with them. Uh, thank them for the opportunity that, you know, with their, your experience and your, they're sharing their experience about your company. That's helpful for other visitors when they go and they start searching for that type of content. But going back to the Facebook and the search, uh, Baruch, remember that with the patent coming out and everything else, we've seen kind of up to the last couple of months, uh, we've seen it through the, at least a year now where this uh, Facebook results are starting to get dwindled down to almost near to nothing. Yes. Uh, and then really kind of in the last two months, we've seen the shift into Yelp being yeah. the top, top spectator. And even with Yelp, Yelp is starting to fall off over those areas. So yeah. I, I, I think what we're seeing is basically Google pulling in the hard ones to try to figure out first and then filtering out the hard ones to figure out the rest of the type of review type elements out there. So I think if somebody comments in a video or somebody actually – you know, mentions you on Google Plus and says, hey, you know, William Rock said this and I really got something out of it. That means more to me because I'm going, as a teacher, they got something out of it. I'm just not, you know, chatting my everybody's ear off and not getting anywhere. Sometimes I feel that way. But <laughs> at the same time, it's a compliment there on a different platform and that's just going back to connecting the dots for social or Samantha. <laughs> How, do we do we know how much of Facebook um, is crawled by Googlebot? Um, surely I that think, would be a I big bot um, for Google to take on. I think the bot can handle just about anything, and it probably has scraped just about anything and everything it can. Only for the fact that it is looking. If, I, I hate to use a scrape word because everybody's talking about the scraping my content and everything else. Utilize it. it's not really you uh, scraping it. It's more utilizing it so that it can reference it when the searcher is ready and asking that question. It needs to actually figure out how to be smart before it can be smart. So it's artificial intelligence looking that direction. So I think the signal's still out there, and I think that Google has all of those top level signals, just like you would see, like Nodex or CircleScope, and all those elements of of uh, you know, connecting the dots through social. Where did they post? I mean, look at the timeline of, you take like Bill Schwalski, for example, being in the industry, what, 1996, I think he was in there? Probably before that. But he has a signal of being on Webmaster World, being an authoritative subject on, on search engine marketing and uh, 
you know, like semantic search technology, machine learning, patents, big time on patents. So he's developed his name as a geek all the way through all those different sites. So don't even, we don't even have to look at like Facebook. We can see signals from uh, old social media engagements. So for example, I was on a phishing community way back in the day. It was under W Rock CA when I was in California. So it's not associated to my name, so to say, but in my uh, signature sometimes I put William Rock. So everybody knew me as William Rock, but my yeah. username was completely different. Well, the algorithm has to figure that out too. You know, um, it's a constantly living, uh, moving algorithm, and you can take it all the way to Google Plus Photos I posted on my wall. Uh, the machine learning algorithm figured out what I like to do in my uh, for my photos because I I take a lot of pictures I've upgraded to a terabyte now for my pictures halfway through that um, but with that I normally use their editing tool I add like frames around things I'll do black and white or I'll experiment with lenses and stuff but where the Google bot got screwed up is I never I, I use those tools I use these certain frames and I use these different filters and it gave me an auto awesome thinking that I would like that which was cool but then those are the ones I never published. So I think it needs to get smarter on how it understands what I did and what I published and how to, to better learn how to fix uh, an auto awesome and impress them. But it's a, it's a really neat, uh, if you go back to when we first started learning about uh, YouTube uh, doing machine learning algorithm updates, or not updates, but learning about cats, you know, back in what, 2007? Uh, they put YouTube out for a study just for two, was it, two months just to learn about cats. How much data could it actually come back with? And then its interpretation at the end of what it thought a cat looked like in multiple grams. It was, it's a cool study. Um, I've got it somewhere on my wall. But um, I really am excited where it's going, and that's where a lot of people are, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about the, the new box that keeps coming up on the search engines. So... Uh, Baruch, have you had ex experienced any weird things with those um, uh, answer boxes by chance? Uh, which answer box is the search? The new search box, or? Yeah, I mean, because you're you're not in the United States as much, but and when you're doing searches for like the search box, it comes up. If I'm talking to you about what is uh, DMCA or what is? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. Sometimes no, sometimes it just won't work. It'll say, give me like a yellow. Warning or something like that that it can't, that it's not working or something like that. Okay, yeah, because it seems to be working over here, and the link uh, for the reference of whoever that answer was from right. is actually referenced now in the bottom link. It was it was uh, it was like hit and miss. It was like sometimes it was there, sometimes it wasn't, and that kind yeah. of brought me to what my comment was a little bit earlier about people saying scraping because right now this whole thing on the internet is about scraping my content. And I don't want them to do that because yeah. they're not. Sending me traffic, they're getting, you know, they're sending my traffic to this answer box, and I'm not getting credit for it. That's it. Uh, but but basically, if you have the best answer, the robot says you have the best answer. So doesn't that mean you're more authoritative? Mm. If you're gonna, I mean, most of their answer boxes come from Wikipedia, so all you've got to do is beat Wikipedia, and that's not hard to do. You know, provide a good page with an answer, and they're going to actually you know, bring your, your snippet in there with the answer, but they're still going to have that link for reading more. Land them on that page and use it as a A-B split test. Yeah. Okay, okay guys. Um, look, I just point out that um, um, YouTube only give us eight hours for this Hangout. Um, and oh, wow. So it, gives you, it gives you, like, a limit? Uh, yeah, it actually... Uh, has a hard limit of eight hours. They just cut us off um, um, at that point. And um, if we proceed at this rate, um, we'll certainly be nudging that limit before we cover our questions. <laughs> um, it, 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 you'll probably notice um, um, that, that on the screen, normally we actually have the question. And the question that uh, we, we've just addressed is, uh, do Facebook page reviews have an impact on Google SERPs? And I think it um, has been summed up admirably. Uh, um, William Rock gave um, a brilliant answer, and so did Baruch. Um, um, but I, I think we also uh, got a little bit sidetracked there. Um, Edwin Yonk in, in, in the chat uh, on the Hangout uh, informs us that 
Facebook reviews are crawled and indexed. Um, and uh, William Rock says yes, but they are falling off. Um, and um, but Nishant Desai uh, said indirectly, and, and um, that would be my understanding too. Um, um, social activity uh, is valuable, um, but can't be defined in uh, measurable terms. Is that a fair comment? I, I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, um, next uh, question we have on our run list is from Gabriel Partanai, and Gabriel has asked a number of questions of us uh, recently. Uh, he, uh, this is titled, Authorship Markup um, is no longer supported in Google Web Search. Um, and uh, um, Gabriel asks, uh, do we have uh, any more information? And two, um, is publisher markup still necessary? Um, so uh, apropos of what we were just talking about a moment ago, uh, let's just deal with these two questions. Do we have uh, information uh, on whether uh, uh, like more information on, on the recent announcement by Google that they're no longer going to use the, the rel author tag um, and uh, is publisher markup, i.e. the uh, rel publisher tag, is that still necessary? I think John Mueller actually put a, uh, the nail in the coffin on that one. Um, if you go out to his uh, profile on Google+, Plus, there's a great write-up, lots of questions uh, from all over the world and he basically has answered just about every single one in his comment stream. So there's a lot of good information to be found in that, and I recommend you reading that first, and then uh, you'll understand. I think uh, there's a couple other people, Eric Engage, uh, Mark Trapagan, which is one of the biggest ones for author rank uh, on the Internet. Uh, they actually had some good hangouts with some fantastic people, so I would definitely look them up and then do some research on that. But I, you know, it's not going to help you. It's not going to hurt you. Either keep it on there or leave, you know, but it's not going to do anything for you. Focus on the other schema tags. You know, there's some major cool things that are coming out uh, that you can easily implement on your website and, uh, and do a lot more uh, for the user experience than just fo focusing on, you know, authorship markup. I think Google's going to connect the dots regardless. It's, it's already shown us that. Anybody else? Well, that um, real publisher attack is still uh, used. Um, uh, it's mainly used for the, the knowledge panel, I think. So if you have a local business, make sure uh, uh, to verify that. And then when pe if people will search for your brand name, they get a nice uh, uh, on the mobile at, at the top and on the desktop at the side. Uh, your address, your phone number. So, yeah, I, for, for sure I would use the raw publisher. Yep, um, I, 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 I'd agree with that. Um, what about you, Tim Kappa? No? Okay. All right, um, so summing up for Gabriel Pardonnet, uh, um, a recommendation is to is to seek out John Mueller's post on, on the subject. Uh, um, it's certainly been dropped from um, uh, well, Google state that it's being dropped, but personally, I'll, I'll still be using it. Google's not the only game in town, and who knows what other search engines are using. Um, and certainly, the, the rel author tag. Um, there's no burden to carry, but uh, I mean I think uh, publisher markup um, is just uh, is important, um, and um, we've actually got a community ready and waiting for um, um, uh, for you for that, uh, and it's called the publisher rank. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> it's been registered since February this year. We'll see what happens. Um, okay, just an update uh, on an earlier question. Um, I'm, I'm just chatting with uh, Diego uh, Seguro, uh, who uh, asked the question on a political campaign. Uh, 
he said um, uh, that he saw the hangout uh, and uh, he'll tell us um, what uh, they did and, and, and how it worked uh, after the campaign, but uh, he can't give current uh, details. Um, and um, oh, he also asks, uh, what is our uh, business model uh, for uh, SEO questions? How do you make money with SEO questions? And the simple answer is we don't. Uh, oh, Tim Kapper might. Uh, I'm sure he's got a, a couple of introductions to some Russian oligarchs via, via uh, our uh, community, but um, um, we, we, we do SEO questions for the love of it. Um, if we were doing it for the money, um, we wouldn't be uh, doing it for long. All right, uh, our um, next question um, is from Greg Christan who asks, does anyone know how to add a hyperlink on an image in Gmail? Um, we should have uh, added this to that question earlier on tonight. Uh, the goal is to A-B test uh, which version of the email yields the most links uh, back to the website. Um, I know how to insert a URL and an image, but I want the image to be where they can click on, then go to my site. Uh, any ideas? I've been messing around for the last hour and figured uh, someone probably knows how to do this. Thanks, Greg. I see Dave Elliott um, added an answer um, on the uh, SEO questions community. You can add image links via your signature in Gmail settings, but I don't think you can add a link to images in the body of your Gmail messages anymore. Uh, it used to be an option in settings labs, but I can't see it now. I'd use MailChimp if I were you. They have a free plan for under 2,000 um, uh, mail outs, and uh, he thinks it's 2,000 anyway. Um, and MailChimp is a lot more flexible. And Gmail really isn't designed uh, for bulk sends. I think the I think the big thing that we're missing is yes, you can actually put a link into a, an image. I think the reason that we can't as much it used to be able to hover over the image, and once you put it, you inserted the image into your, uh, the body of the email highlight over the actual image or click on it once and then you could be able to actually have a little hover piece that comes out and you can put a link into that. Uh, there's also a little link icon at the very bottom that you can actually use that too. But what we're forgetting about is if you're sending a bulk email through Gmail and you're actually having links on the images, it could be looked at as a spam filter or possible uh, filter, filter through the malware uh, piece a lot more often for the fact that it's going to always look for and try to protect the Gmail customer. Just with the dot. Anybody else? All right. Um, moving on. Um, um, I, I, I t moving on from Greg Christian's question. Um, here's one from Benjamin Cullen on SEO, digital marketing and social media marketing training. That's an interesting question. Um, he says, good morning all. I'd like some suggestions, reviews and links for SEO, digital marketing and social me media marketing training, please. I'm in the UK. Well, we won't hold that against him. Um, I would like to hear about face-to-face, -face, online and book-driven courses, please. Um, any information will be gratefully received. Have a great day, Ben. Well, you can go to scroundtable.com to check. You hit it before I hit it. That's what I was going to say. You know, it's uh, better than an SEO going to like a college or anything like that. I mean, Barry's got some really. Uh, up to date, though, too. I mean, basically, he knows when things are going before anybody else knows when they're going. He's our geek of geeks. All 
All right, so here's... you got the Google, uh, what is it, uh, the Webmaster Academy as well, right? Yeah, I think it does. There's a bunch of things. you can. As far as books and things, I would probably, here's another name drop, but look at David Amberland, what he's been able to do with his book. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's based, probably, I don't know how far he is from you, but uh, at the same time, he does a lot of face-to-face. -face. Uh, he travels all over the place and speaks at uh, large corporations and, and talks about semantic search and stuff like that. I think if uh, something you want to learn about, look into how you know the, the future of Google versus what happened way in the past. Uh, anything that's basically three months old is probably outdated. So that's where Barry comes in with his stuff and, and a lot of what we push out. Uh, this is something we live, you know, eat and sleep all day long with. Before you know, before before all the massive upda updates on a regular basis, on on and on and on, you know, I mean, O'Reilly couldn't even keep up. I mean, you go now to your local bookstore. I mean, a lot of the SEO books are uh, outdated. I always check it out, you know. So I mean, you can't keep up. So you can come to <laughs> your hangouts. You got there's so many other hangouts. I mean, this is all we're learning faster than. Than anything right now, absolutely, and and this is where everybody seems to be really learning. This is where I learn, you know, being able to talk face to face live on a show like this, where we're just kind of going through and and talking what we know or what we don't know, and you know, we either mute or we don't mute. Um, but the the conversation is so important, especially for the holiday season coming up. I mean, there's so many companies out there that still haven't even worked on their business plan for 2015, let alone their marketing plan for what they're going to do to attract customers as uh, the highest level. They've not gone through any A-B split testing, and they're, they're just, you know, well, we've done this forever, and this is how it's done, you know, and they're, they're going to be in the shock for this year, I think. You know, a lot of people are going to complain, that, oh, well, it was just so much harder, but they didn't plan for it. You know, if we go back to the history, I, I started this in 1998, and I've watched, just like you guys, we've watched the algorithms change, we've watched them adapt, and you can go back to, 2001 when Google Talks actually was presenting on machine learning and they had a fantastic uh, demonstration of exactly what it is and how a computer actually learns and adapts. Those are the things that, you know, okay, you're, you're not going to do that as a CEO, but hopefully your marketing company does. And that's where a lot of big marketing company firms are the same way. It's like a book. They, they're outdated and they don't even know they're outdated. I'm looking at some of my competition's uh, clients. I mean, it's so sad to, it's what I'm seeing here, to see what I'm seeing here in Toronto. It's bad here, too. I've got one that is, I mean, they've got 400-plus clients um, here just in Kansas, and then they've got uh, now four other offices. I mean, so imagine that many clients, but they're all doing the same thing, which is link building, comment trash, uh, article spinning, press sad. release. Sad. I mean, all the same techniques that everybody got in trouble for and still going to get in trouble for, and they're, they're spending more money cleaning up the mess, but yet you've got marketers still con you know, continuing to create it. Yeah, it's crazy. But that's my rant, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah, you see it every day. Clients come to you, and you look at their profile, and you think, oh, Lord. And it's, it's going on. It's because there are so many companies that set themselves up in the SEO market um, and have not been able to adapt out of the buying cheap links from the continent and selling them on as a package. Yeah. Well, There's uh, signs in my area, like $2 website, you know, and the phone number. I mean, they just set it up in all the traffic uh, holes and it just, that's it. I mean, People called, got screwed. I mean, can you imagine? Like, you're using this guy for your business, you know, for your business, and then you ask yourself, how can I get out of this? Come on, seriously. Well, that brings us back to even the politics question. I mean, there was, you know, how do I market for politics? If you look at even the marketing companies today, and I'm just going to use the United States, you go to any one of these marketing firms that are throwing up WordPress sites, and charging a buku amount of money and then doing their campaign on Facebook and everything else and forgetting about you know what works and what doesn't and they're still link building and everything else and they only have what six months to actually market for it um, well that is just shooting yourself in the foot and then you look at half of these uh, 
political places, and they're not even using SSL for an admin uh, for their you know WordPress site, go to say. You know, so it's hosted on probably their office server or somebody else, whatever. And then you've got unsecure political players out there. I mean, marketing companies just have to figure out how to adapt um, or get out of the game. That's my thought. They're hurting everything. They're unsecure, they, you know, they, they have to have a good universal team. And if you have to do your due diligence as a business owner to find those type of people that as the future of the semantic search grows and the way that Google actually filters things out, you've got to be focused on, are you, is this company going to help me or hurt me? And it's, you know, it used to be, oh, yeah, I'm just going to pay the money. I mean, you, you can go into the, the law profession, you know, so all the attorneys, most of them, they just want to sp spend the money, and they don't want to spend the time on actually teaching. You now it's like, okay, what can you teach me about your practice? Can you actually get out in video and talk to people so they know who you are? You know, get out there and engage with them. Oh, I don't have time. That's just not my, my thing. Well, that's fine, but you're going to get left behind. And then at the same time is when you're, when you're not paying attention to it, a marketing company can do whatever they want, and they can teach you whatever they want to keep your business and make you happy. And those monthly reports, you're seeing those fantastic numbers. But what are they really talking about? How do we actually convert more of this these traffic? And let's filter out the ones that are having high bounce rates. Those are the companies that need to be in your stuff, knowing, hey, bugging you. Hey, get on this one. I think you really need to get engaged on this community. Learn. I mean, lawyers need to go out there. Doctors need to go out there. Doctors are the worst ones. They don't want to be online. Uh, so the list goes on of those type of uh, you know, opportunities, but it goes back to what are you marketing, right? I mean, is it e-commerce or is it political? or is, and What is the true goal? And figure out a marketing plan that fits that goal that's, that you know that you can actually commit to. If you can't commit to it, then you know that you might not get those expectations that you're wanting from that marketing company. You have to participate. Okay. G getting back to um, uh, this question, um, can someone, uh, would somebody like to sum up um, suggestions, reviews, and links for SEO, digital marketing, and social media marketing training, please? Um, in the UK, I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I think uh, all, all of the UK SEOs already know everything already, don't they, Tim? <laughs> well, no, at Jim. least the ones here do. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jim, we're always learning. Um, you know what? Uh, uh, for social media, um, I don't know what his company is called, but Thomas. Um, hang on, let me find you. Where is uh, Lyndon when you need him? <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's build he's he's almost finished building his Death Star. Oh, man. <laughs> um, still for this guy. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, Thomas Mo uh, Morphew has got got a very good social media uh, community, uh, which is UK based, and it's it's. Uh, on Google Plus, it's the G Plus resource. Um, G Plus resource. Yeah, um, I think they have a site, or at least they're in the process of building a site. Um, and if you look on his page, there'll be a lot to do with social media in the UK on that one. Um, for SEO, it's it's like William was saying, we learn so much from just communicating and, um, and, and engaging and following communities on Google Plus as well as um, sites out there that regularly publish updates and you can find a lot of them and a lot of good ones. You can find some you know, stuff for intermediate and then you can get some really mind-blowing stuff which 90% of the time is way over my head. Um, with SEO by the sea and, 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 and patents, you know, if you want to get that far into it. Um, so there's, there's, there's a lot out there. I, 
in terms of specifically in the UK for SEO, uh, I mean, I would I would just tell uh, Benjamin, you know what, just go to Google Alerts and set up Google Alerts, and then you know uh, use those terms that you want to basically find out about, and then just do that. Set up your Google Alerts, and then find hundreds of different sites. Yeah, and, and don't buy one of those gig rich quick things because those are all outdated anyways. Yeah. Uh, you know, focus on, you know, like S I'm gonna name you know, SEO Dojo's got and you know, a lot of those guys that jump in just randomly like here. Well we've got, you know, uh, Martin Shervington or we've got uh, you know, David Amberlin that pops in here and there, Bill Swalski, Eric Engage, Mark Trapagan. So there's all sorts of different people on different times every week on that show. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we have uh, help desk hangout every Friday um, at uh, 1 o'clock. So that we share everything like this. And then I think uh, if you want to go even deeper, uh, didn't uh, Josh Krasinski, or how do you pronounce it, Krasinski? No, uh, it's Krasinski. Sorry. And then uh, Barry Schwartz. So Barry Schwartz and, the, and both of them jumped into a really awesome learning session um, well, on when Talking about Barry Schwartz, if you follow him, he's just posted an update now. Uh, from Google, obviously, well, AK from John Mueller, basically your sank, your your site won't rank well because Googlebot's not impressed with it. So yeah. basically, I mean, Barry, you know, follows all these things all the time, and you know, it's just been posted. Basically, he's quoted John Mueller saying that um, your site uh, doesn't impress Googlebot much uh, because it essentially uses the same videos as as every other site out there, and it's not impressive, it's just not going to rank. Uh, so, you know, same again, use Google Alerts, um, you know, just follow certain, uh, some authorities out there, and you'll get these updates coming through all the time. Well, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. We post on our wall all the time, and so if you actually follow us, you know, then you can also engage with us Ask the questions. We might not answer them right away, depending on how busy we are. But at the same time, we will get back to you um, and, and try to give you the right direction. At least. Yeah, we don't. Uh, the we answers. Don't. The answers are not going to be vague, by the way. So yeah. Yeah. Like the other answers you hear out there. We go into a lot more depth on those shows, I think, and and that's where it gets really cool. Where you're learning, and again, you get to engage in the comments and just play. I mean, again, we're no nobody's link dropping. You know, we're not going to review your site and stuff like that. But when you're asking questions and, and engaging with us and stuff like this, um, I think there's a lot of learning that can be had there. Uh, just for you know, marketing, it might not just be in the UK; it's worldwide. So we've got people from this panel all over the place. Well, look, um, uh, if I can throw my two cents in, um, some one thing that you guys haven't mentioned. Um, and I say this from, you know, uh, having been on the internet since 1996, um, and that is that um, the most valuable um, uh, place for learning that I have stumbled across on the internet um, is the green room, both the before and after of the SEO questions hangouts. Um, uh, William, I know uh, all of those um, other venues and, and they're interesting in themselves, um, but um, I um, have learned so much uh, from, from the guys that uh, come here every week uh, to um, you know, answer other people's questions. Um, and um, the, the thing about it is that, uh, you know, we are such a, a sharing um, community. Uh, I think it stems because we're, most of us are uh, 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 old hands um, from uh, um, the uh, Google Webmaster Help Forums and um, um, we uh, are here on SEO questions because we think we can do it better. Um, you know, um, the um, uh, the other places, um, as Tim just said in the chat there, you know, we, we all have uh, uh, to share knowledge uh, to improve our own learning. And, and SEO is, is a constant learning experience. Uh, it's shifting sands, and, um, conditions that change um, um, constantly. 
Um, and uh, unless, I mean, we, 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 we can't cover all the bases. So, um, uh, and each of us have, have a different skill set. And uh, so, yeah, the green rooms uh, in the SEO question community. Um, we don't charge for admission. You're more than welcome to join us. Um, if you really want to know what's going on, um, I think that's the only place you're going to find, or no, not the only place, but th that is a good place um, to find out what's going on. Would you agree with that, Tim Capo? Yeah, definitely. And I Rob Mars uh, thinks, uh, Rob Mars uh, also agrees. I would say to, to tackle that, I mean, I, I never really thought of the green room, but that's where we get a lot of our experience. And if you take it from a conference level, we, you know, some of us speak at conferences or attend conferences, it's very similar to the after hours. You know, you're not out there to, you know, get crazy or nothing, but you're out there to learn with other geeks in an open environment that's not recorded. You know, and I think that's where you're going to get a lot of the stuff even here, though, I mean, we're we're speaking about a lot of different things, so it's not like we're going to speak about something that's oddball in the green room. But sometimes you get, you know, you may have some question, and then all of a sudden, you know, somebody's got a quick answer, and now you've got, you know, something you can go back with and, and execute on your own site. So, you know, takeaways are takeaways, golden nuggets are those as well. Good point. Okay, so I think Benjamin, um, you'll be happy with that. Um, here's a question now from Mac Maddox. Um, how does a, a dot rental site uh, rank compa or compared to a, a dot com site? Um, I asked uh, I asked John about this before. Uh, this is when I go go uh, again. I was about to say their company, and I don't want to, but. The, when the famous registrar came out with uh, these kind of, um, you know, uh, T, uh, TLDs, and uh, no, he said it can rank the same. He sees a, a lot of that in his area. Um, in his area, you know, they they rank the same as a .dot com. Yeah, I mean, if you look at what they're doing with the TLDs in Google domains, I mean, they're basically bringing in all of those same ones. It's just it's basically goes right back to the matter your uh, your subdomain or sorry, not subdomain. Your uh, TLD, it still doesn't matter. It goes back to the quality of the content, experience of the visitors. All those same things still apply. So that's the way but, I would play. But uh, if you buy like a .co, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> you know, it won't rank as well, you know, uh, just like a .ca. I can't program a .ca to work well in, in the Netherlands, right? Well, if, if your servers are over there, I mean, basically, you, there's a lot of people who are having the problems where they're hosting those type of sites in an international environment, but they have their server located in a different international environment. And yeah. so, off the IP, that's causing confusion by uh, the Googlebot and goes back to if the Googlebot doesn't like it, then of course you're not going to rank. But yeah, buying like uh, dot rentals or dot lawyer or dot uh, plumbing, I mean, yeah, you can. You know. It opens up a huge space for you know being able to go shorter URLs, and then but you know then you still have the actual long TLD, which I don't know if I'm really into those. But I mean, take a look at uh, for instance the big example that I send clients to is join join uh, join dot me, right? I mean they're doing really well with uh, yeah. with the dot. So that's a really uh, good example uh, to take a look at. And they have a good quality oh. visitor experience too. I mean they're, they're they have yeah. everything that they would need as a regular company to rank. Uh, just because they have a different TLD. I mean, so you make a fa fantastic point. I'll have to check that out. Thank you. Yeah. We, we I will, I will uh, have Mac, uh, Mac just go to that website and, I mean, check how they're doing. I mean, you, yeah, you shouldn't have a problem. I will still pick uh, .com over uh, 100%. any of the other one. 100%. Uh, yeah, me too. I um, come from maybe. Greece. If I was to ask for a show of hands, I don't think there's any doubt that uh, um, anyone would not put their hand up for a .com uh, over any other TLD. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, w w one thing, what, while you guys were chatting, I, I, I heard somebody uh, um, yeah. saying that... Um, Jim, that was me. That's I'm from... 
Right. I'm from Greece, and uh, this question has been going around since 19, actually 97, uh, whether someone should get a, let's say, a .gr, because I'm from Greece, or versus a .com. Uh, it's, we've been proving it all along since then that uh, regardless of whether it's a, a .gr or a .com, it's all a matter of how much work you put in it. That's all I would say from my side. Uh, now, the, the fact that you would choose a .com would be if you were looking to, if it, it could become more marketable. If you're looking, at, yeah, it, no, not international because you can, uh, you can, you can project your whatever you have to project with whatever dot. But the question is whether you can actually sell it again. If you want to flip, let's say your uh, site. Well, absolutely. I mean, your domain. Dot com, yeah. Then you've been targeting all this time in Canada, for instance. Uh, I can go ahead and sell you the site, and then you know uh, change the geo targeting in my webmaster tools to Greece exactly. and give it to you, and here you go. Yeah, right. With the, with so the that, you know, we can't do it. Right. Right. That, is not, that is not how it works. Uh, uh, Geotargeting. Uh, of, of course, Google looks at uh, the, the country code uh, TLD, but uh, there's also uh, they also look at the links um, uh, to the .com, right? If you want to geotarget uh, the .com. And if all those links come from Canada, it doesn't really help you in Greece. No. Edwin, uh, that's not my point. My point is that if he wants to buy it, like let's say he wants to take my uh, travel business, because Spiros is in a travel business, so if I basically I can, you know, go ahead and tell him, hey, I can, you know, disavow my stuff or whatever. Uh, I can go ahead and s if I want to change my business and move it to Greece, why not? I mean, I can I can do that. Take my dot com and sell it to him. I mean, if he really wants it, you know. But yeah, at the same time, yeah, if I had a lot of links just from Canada alone, I mean. There's a way to uh, go about that, and uh, you know. But you wouldn't be able. But you wouldn't be able to sell the .gr to a .com. No, I can't. No, I wouldn't. A, a, no. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I. That's what I meant. That it's not marketable. Yeah. As a domain. It's marketable in that country, though, in that zone. Yeah. Um, of course. Yeah. Of And if you yeah. have the analytics to back up the property, then it's not the how many links it's coming to it. It's more what is the property? What are all the dots that connect it together? How well is that? Uh, Edwin, all, Edwin, all I said was, is uh, I would just go ahead and, I mean, if he wants to buy it, I mean, you know, I would do all that, whatever I have to do in the back end, and then hand it to him, you know, and of course, hand it to him, maybe disavow my entire Canadian links and have him start from scratch. Yeah, because he's just moving anyways, and Google's going to see that move, and basically yeah. saw that you disavowed the links and said, okay, IP's changed, everything's changed, uh, it's now over here, and that's that's what we. Okay. No, that that is that's a that's a fair comment, but we we need to make sure that uh, it is that geo targeting is more than just uh, uh, some settings in uh, the webmaster tools. Uh. Well, that, you know, when you're looking at uh, geo uh, rank and you look at uh, what they've done with Google uh, Plus My Business and all those app applications, most of it's actually just connecting the links between. Uh, the algorithm is seeing and detecting, verifying uh, that you are the property you are. That's one level of it, but then you also have you know, there are multiple signals that are basically looked at, not just you know, IP uh, location. You know, there's all those different. Those are just one of many little things, and we can go on a complete rampage, I think, on this one. But good points, guys. Okay. So I'm uh, summing up. Uh, um, it's um, dot com um, all, all the way, and uh, dot rentals if you like, um, but uh, don't expect any any benefit from it. Is that a fair comment? Yes. Okay. Um, moving on to question 19 uh, from Chantel Brown, um, and it's. Um, for some reason or other, I'm not updating here. Um, I don't know what's gone wrong. Mac, um, Mac. Am I still connected? Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, well, we'll struggle on. Um, I'll try clicking it again. No, we've got a bit of a freeze happening here. No, nothing's working. All right, story of my life. Um, okay, here's a question. Chantel Brown. 
um, um, on missing author on Google Webmaster Tools. She said, so I just looked at my Google Webmaster, it says missing author. Does anyone know how to fix this? Um, I guess um, she didn't get the memo. Um, guys, can you answer that while I try and fix this problem I've got? Well, this, this is basically the micro formats. That's, um, I think it's uh, standard in uh, uh, WordPress. And, that, uh, and she's missing the author uh, field. So basically, she needs to edit uh, her uh, team and add those things in. Okay. Um. Okay. Sorry for the confusion, guys. I've got a, a problem on the dmcoquestions.com site. Um, um, look, yeah, let, let's move on to yeah, the there is something, something just happened. Uh, I think it's fine. I mean, I think it's just blank now. Yeah, yes, I know. I, I, I tried to, to reload it, but it's um, uh, waiting for a res because see what what we do on on our um, um, on on our um, uh, panelist report um, that what we enter on those updates the live site, mm -hmm. and um, the last two or three weeks we've been having a lot of trouble with. Um, um, DOS attacks, and um, this is probably another one of them. Um, we've, we've been handling them okay, but um, every now and then they, they, they get the better of us. Um, anyway, um, can I ask you guys to cover this question? It's question 20 on your run list um, from Patrick Rabanza um, on subdomain or new domain. And he says, hello, I have my company website about online marketing and now I want to create a new uh, page or website about my photography work. I have to decide if I should use a subdomain on my company website, a subfolder, um, which will probably get, uh, and will probably get some quality links, or if I should create a completely new domain. I know there are pros and cons for every solution, um, but what do you guys think would be the best overall solution? Um, oh, it looks like the WCA question site has caught up and, and we've got the answer uh, on the screen. Um, so, um, yes, guys, um, there are pros and cons. Um, which way would you go? Subdomain, subfolder, or new domain? I had recently this problem uh, and I was on one of those hangouts with uh, with uh, Google and uh, uh, actually it's either you go with a subdomain or a directory it's ex more or less the same thing that's the result and the chat that I had with various other SEOs and through the uh, Google hangout uh, basically if it's gonna be a different site uh, what you from what I eventually got through was that if it's going to be a totally different site, it's not going to look like the original www whatever, then it's best to go with a subdomain. Google will look at it as a different site. Um, if it's going to be more or less the same thing, then you put it as a, as a subdirectory. Uh, if, it has, if it has a good uh, authority, domain authority, uh, then some of that will spill out, spill off to either the subdirectory or the subdomain. Otherwise, if you go with a new, a new domain, then you're starting from zero. That's what I. That's the result I got. Uh, if uh, yeah, that's that's my rant. <laughs> no, I think I think you're correct on a lot of that. I think that uh, it depends on the level of what he's trying to accomplish with his photography site. Um, if he's just trying to offer a separate service or additional service, I would definitely say just put it in a subfolder, keep the same theme, and then add the services with his photography things, and then subfolders with uh, you know what he's doing as far as the service and portfolio and all those different things. But if he's going after to go maybe sell his pictures online to different uh, 
you know, stock photography companies and so on, then he's got to actually separate that into a, do a new domain and start to build the authority on that as a photographer. But like I said, it, it depends on the situation completely. But I think that, uh, you know, if you do a subdomain, I don't, I, I wouldn't necessarily do a subdomain uh, for that case just because, you know, you're fighting for the main domain route and then they could be... Confused. I mean, with, with that, I mean, uh, I mean, the subdomain story, I mean, I just take a look at Comcast, okay? I mean, I look at what Comcast is doing with their subdomains. It's insane. So it can work both ways, you know? Um, and just the home page would be specifically about what he does in general, blah, 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 blah. But then he can separate it, you know, cine cinematography, whatever he, you know, he has in mind, he can just kind of break it down. I mean, both can work, in my opinion. It, it will, and basically you've just got to figure out what works and, and basically the situation, yeah. looking yeah. long term, I mean, because it's harder to actually do some, uh, take it back after you've started it. You know, so it's like you have to kind of go back into your project planning and, and say, okay, if I'm going to, you know, if I, it's like the whole thing, I, I own 50 or 100 domains, and do I read a 301 redirect, it's kind of like the same thing almost, where you're, you're having to make a decision based off what your business model and plan is for long term, right? Just, you don't want to screw up and basically have to go back and, and fix it all, and then all those broken links and the deal or the mess you're gonna have to deal with trying to clean it up afterwards. That's right. Have we knocked this question out? Moving to 21. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> I can see that I'm already superfluous. Okay. Um, well, um, we've done it again. Um, we've answered all of the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google Plus um, in the last seven days, at least. Um, if you have a question, feel free to find us. Uh, um, by searching for done SEO questions uh, on the communities tab on, on Google Plus and uh, everything uh, asked will be transferred to dumbseoquestions.com and answered here uh, on our Hangouts. Um, now we move on to uh, our news section which is a bit light on this week. Um, each week um, we uh, um, if items of news um, um, pop up, um, we'll post them on the uh, SEO News community on Google Plus, and um, and then uh, we'll discuss them um, at, at, after the questions are, 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 are complete. Um, the, the first uh, one that um, we have uh, this week um, is from. Um, um, we were talking about Barry Schwartz just uh, a, a, a few minutes ago, um, um, and B Barry uh, shared a post saying Google is de-Googleifying the Google search results. Um, now with the knowledge graph uh, panel uh, by Mark Trapagan. Um, I'm not sure if um, the knowledge graph has completely disappeared though. Um, I haven't done any testing. Do you have anything to add to that? Mm -hmm. oh, what it is, it's just the brand pages. Uh, you normally had a little brand page um, <clears throat> saying, you know, latest news from. So it's the knowledge, the knowledge panel was still there, but it's just the little knowledge info panel. So it would have been in that screenshot, it would have just been, you know, uh, the latest post from. That's what's disappeared. So they've removed the brand page postings out of the knowledge info panel for the brand. I'm sorry, Tim. I, I didn't quite understand what you meant there. Right. If you can, if you had a brand page, a Google Plus brand page, and you connected it with Rel Publisher, in the info panel, you would or the knowledge info panel, you would normally have the little brand displaying the first snippet from their latest post, right? Mm -hmm. 
That is what is no longer displaying in the Knowledge Info Panel section. Okay. The little brand thing saying the late, you know, the latest post from the person's Google Plus page or, or brand page. Get it? So if you posted something like just recently on your local business even, like, you know, you'll see the latest posts on the right side. Yeah, that's what's disappeared now. You know, that's kind of sad, but at the same time, whew, as long as the, the company name is still there, that's all I care about, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, what was happening is, you know, it, it did fluctuate anyway. If you didn't, it used to disappear off the SERPs anyway if you hadn't posted within roughly, um, you know, roughly a 24-hour period. It would disappear anyway. What so, I like about it is, uh, if you type in the company's name, it's asking, you know, you can see the directions where to get there, write a review and follow. So yeah, trying yeah. to kind of actually help you at the same time, uh, what I hate though is that you have to kind of scroll down to see the the phone number on the right, but you can see it anyways on the left. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess they're testing. I mean, it's there's mm. pluses and minuses to this new thing. Yeah. I'm looking at it now, and it just says, you know, companies open 24 hours, blah, blah, blah. The reviews are there. But, I mean, in order to see the reviews on the right side, you'll have to uh, scroll down, and then there's a little feedback uh, link. They're testing again. Well, you know? that goes back into the whole update with Google uh, my, plus my business, right? I mean, we're seeing a lot of change, and it's a matter of Google figuring out how to connect the dots. And the more the information that we can tell them, the better they're going to actually be able to actually add and display that information. And it's really an A-B split test on us, really. The way I look at it is, yeah, it's not a bad thing. They're testing it. If they're not going to actually test it, then what good are they as a search engine? So. But if you, uh, if you are logged in, you will still see the, the follow button, no? As far as I know, it's still going to be there. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, if you're logged in... Yes, you can still see the follow button, the review button, for, and the direction button, three buttons. For example, yeah. I did, a, I did a search for Audi, and logged in, I do uh, get a follow button, uh, and in, uh, in uh, logged out, I don't get the follow button. So. Oh, really? Do a simple search for your name. Now, that'll basically pull up everything, a profile to you, your last post, to get you... If, if it basically understands you enough to be able to be a uh, utilized artificial intelligence, if it learned about who you are, it's already connected the dots when you type your name in. And anyone oh, uh, yeah, I had one. You're right because I just see the directions in the right of review. But when you're logged in, the follow button's there. So yeah, because you can't uh, follow without logging in. The only thing that I found annoying is when you actually type in your name and then there's like numbers in there and they're not even associated in your account. Like it's old telephone number of mine. From back in 19, no, 2003, I think, and then, and then basically an old email address. I have no idea where in the in the control panels, and I've tried everywhere. So I'll be probably posting this out on the webmaster forum. But it's kind of a weird thing. You see it in your in the right hand column, but it's not accessible to edit. It's nowhere in my profile, anywhere on Google. Just weird. I've gone through all my sub accounts inside there, and it's still not there. Any ideas on that? What is that again, William? <clears throat> Basically, that um, there, when you look at, if you type your name, like my name, I type my name in, I'm logged in, right? Yeah. Uh, the glitch that I'm seeing right now is that it's showing uh, a telephone number I had from way back in 2003, as well as an old email address that was associated to my account a long time ago. So maybe you just uh, ping, uh, ping Jade Wong, and uh, I'll see what I can do. I can... Uh, ping her and then she can help you with that. Do me a favor and see me, uh, CC me and her together and, and just do an introduction and I'd love to. Uh, I, I don't want to actually ping somebody I don't know yet, you know what I mean? No, no, for sure, but I, uh, she, she can definitely help you with that. Or yeah, you know what? Uh, why don't you just send her a tweet then? Okay. You want her Twitter here? Yes, I know this just got fixed as I used to, because there's multiple William Rocks out there. Yeah. And there was one guy uh, with William Rock. His Google Plus profile was uh, 
basically a guy drinking a beer, and I actually ended up putting him in a circle under uh, people with my name. And so Google actually got confused, and I, all my uh, icons in my uh, Gmail you, uh, got taken over by his. Finally got fixed by, uh, what, a few weeks ago? Uh, finally came back to normal. But I think that you know, there's a, there was a little glitch in there, too. But those things uh, are always changing, what my point is. So when you type in your name, or you type in an actor or an actress, uh, look at how the actual details show. You know, look at somebody that has historical, like look at Da Vinci. You know, okay, let's go you know, figure out what Da Vinci has got and all the different pieces that the knowledge graph has pointed to uh, reference uh, in articles and documents and books that Google's archived throughout the years. So I think they're going to see a lot more information, especially for mobile. When you're pulling something up, that maybe you know you're you're in class and all of a sudden you're looking for a particular author or whatever. Now you have all the resources at your fingertips. You know, and I think that's what we're seeing out of this uh, this type of display. A way to um, view this as uh, yet another downward relegation of the influence of uh, Google Plus on uh, Google search results um, since Vic uh, Gondotra left. No? Okay. All right. Um, let's um, go um, um, to our next um, news item, which um, um, I, I think is is a, a very uh, a good um, new feature, um, uh, which is uh, new Google Analytics benchmarking reports. Um, this was um, shared uh, initially by the uh, inimitable uh, AJ Cohn and um, um, I haven't got um, um, m much uh, to um, uh, say about it, but um, like um, <laughs> I'm I'm just happy to follow AJ Cohn, and uh, if he thinks uh, uh, whatever AJ Cohn thinks is fine by me. What do you guys have to say about it? I think it's going to be really neat to be able to gauge that, um, especially if uh, I'm playing around with a lot of paid advertising that goes back to this, where I'm actually sending traffic to an actual video. And testing the uh, difference between sending traffic there versus actually a hangout. But the data that I'm actually starting to collect on the backside is really neat. So I'm actually in the process of studying this right now. So I'll have probably more to actually report back to when I learn it. I'll put no, this in. I, was just, I was just saying, this is what I mean. I mean, you're not going to find this in your local bookstore. I mean, there's so much info. Like, we need, you know. It's, 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 it is opt in, so I'm curious. Uh, I, I haven't played uh, with it yet, but uh, is the data good or uh, is there enough data uh, to get a good uh, sense of a trend? Or Because it is opt in, right? So. I don't know how many uh, companies will opt in uh, to this analytics. Well, you have to be able to separate that versus the others. And then if you can actually break that down in your, uh, into funnel reports within your analytics, you can start to gauge uh, a decent understanding. You're not going to get all the same data that you would have. Uh, you know, It's not anonymous, but if you look at some of these YouTube channels that are still out there with you know funky, weird names out there that are not utilizing real names, I think the migration is starting to come where it's just the comfort zone for some of these guys that want to get a taste for it or something. I have no idea, but I think that they should all be logged in so that they can get the best experience on YouTube, so to say, versus you know being anonymous. Depends on what you're doing, I guess, uh, what you're watching. So. So it's not open for the Dutch market uh, yet, uh, Rob.
You can talk. Oh, yeah. Two small data sets. Yes, yes. Okay. That's a shame. <laughs> I'm sure it's coming soon, no? Well, the yeah. Netherlands is a little bit a little smaller than uh, the United States uh, or the United yeah, Kingdom. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's been in beta for a little while. I've actually been playing around in my account, or one of my accounts with it, and just kind of seeing what it does and what it doesn't do. And I still think that there's a lot of limitations to the tool, but I think you know, with anything, you go back to you know, look at Google Plus two years ago. I mean, look at the interface compared to where it is today. So, you know, yeah, it goes back to the same concept of, you know, the bus is going 65 miles an hour down the road. You change the tires and the oil change at the same time without killing anybody in the process. You know, that's what kind of Google was sitting, where they have to make everybody happy and not kill anybody's websites with the modifications that they do every time. So you're going to have people with some casualties and some not casualties, but uh, more casualties if you've actually done some bad stuff in the past. You know, you know me. I love spammers. <laughs> like. Uh... Yeah, so well, are well, if you go on, if you go on my uh, my homepage for my Google Plus, you'll see the graphic that talks exactly about my spammers. I will hunt you down. <laughs> Having a little fun with my profile, you know, not be so serious. Well, okay. of course, uh, you can these days now that. Um, um, uh, the um, authorship is no longer a, a, an issue. Um, you can afford to have fun with um, your profile. But I've, I've done that for the entire lifespan of my accounts. So it's not anything new for me. And if everybody knows me from way back in the past, I do that same stuff on Google Plus or on Webmaster Forms from way back in the day. So just me being a geek. Okay, guys. Well, um, we uh, Edwin, uh, thank you very, very much. I'm I'm glad you took a week off. Um, you 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 uh, of all people do um, you can't go now. Tony Creeth has just joined us from Switzerland. Um, but uh, you of all people, uh, Edwin, uh, do way more work than I do in in, in uh, doing the legwork for um, the dumb SEO questions. Uh, um, the, the, the whole uh, system and um, it's very much appreciated. Um, uh, we, we all are very, very grateful. Um, and yes, uh, uh, I'm glad you took a, a week off um, because uh, it does get a bit tedious sometimes, doesn't it? I wish I can. Well, sometimes you need to take care. Uh, Take your rest, right? That's so the work I, did, I did check my emails, and uh, yesterday I worked for half a day, so I don't take go. really a week off. But I, I didn't check in on uh, Google Plus. My cousin wants me to go on a cruise with him for two weeks with no internet. Come on, I'm gonna go crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, go ahead, Edwin. Um, um, Baruch. Um, um, didn't, I don't think Baruch heard that you were supposed to still speaking. Um, that was it, uh, Jim. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Right. Bye, bye. Well, mate, we'll see you, see you, see you through the week. Okay, Tony McCreith, um, where are you in Switzerland? Uh, just a sec. I'm in uh, Bregenz. Where is Bregen? Oh. Oh, you broke up there a sec. <laughs> Where is, um, is it Bregen or Bremen? It, um, I haven't heard of Bregen. It's uh, it's by a lake uh, between uh, Switzerland, Germany, 
Uh, it's a little bit of Austria in the in the little corner. So that, that would be somewhere near Interlaken. Oh, I wouldn't know. I just Googled it. <laughs> So are you on a road trip currently then? Uh, I've got a 24-day uh, rail pass, so I'm traveling Europe on train. Fantastic. What fun would that be? It's, it's good. It's, uh, you can, most trains I can just get on whatever train I want, and I've, I don't need to get a ticket or anything. That's so neat. Well, thanks for coming on and board. I ended up here yesterday. Yeah, thanks for joining <laughs> us today. So uh, the the only problem is hit and miss on internet. This hotel's got good Wi-Fi there, and I should be working. Mhm. Mm and this is recorded, so now you've actually got yourself in trouble. Just kidding. Ah, <laughs> uh, you've got one. Ah, uh, <laughs> did John Mueller print that, Tony? Uh, yeah, he, uh, well, should I say I stole it or he gave it me? <laughs> he gave it me. <laughs> I saw that in the flower pot in his uh, office last time, so now you're taking it, huh? Okay, well. Yeah, it, well, he's got a few. <laughs> uh, collector's items, hopefully. Well, I'm going to have to go bug him then. Keep mine. Seems how it's 3D printed, right? That's what he's doing on yeah. yeah. Print. Can you show that again, uh, Tony? It's the, it's the new Google Bot. Uh, I'm gonna go to the local library here in Toronto, and I, I'll get just make my own. There you go. <laughs> Seriously, we have 3D printers here. I haven't even used them. We have to check its packs. Let's get him dealing. Like get uh, get, uh, get the guys to get John to give you the recipe. There's only a PDF or a document. A uh, document file that you can export and give it to you. And we'll just <laughs> hey John, I'm trying to uh, set up a Google Bot store. <laughs> I think I think it would I think it would go over very well, and I'm sure that he'd say no. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. But but I tell you what, you know, I'm sure they're probably going to have them in the Google uh, Google Store probably soon. Oh yeah, for sure. But, but uh, last time I asked the guy, do you have any webmaster stuff? No, sorry. <laughs> Uh, just generic stuff. I called the Google Store like they don't have, because uh, sometimes they do. But hey, they've got a new uh, uh, cap, a new like gray beanie. That I yeah, really yeah. Like. You see that one? I saw it on one of the TCs the other night in the news in the newsroom. Sorry, we're just chatting live now, guys. <laughs> Completely distracted ourselves ourselves on this show now. Thanks, Tony. I'm shutting up. Now. Sorry. <laughs> What's next, William Rock asks. Well, um, we can go to green room if you like, guys. I'll I take that. Um, look, I, I see we still have viewers, and um, uh, I'd like to thank you for, for showing an interest in, in what we do. Uh, um, your participation uh, makes um, what we do here uh, worthwhile, and, and, and we thank you for that. I'm going to, well, actually, there is already a, a link uh, directly into the uh, Hangout, um, and you're more than welcome to come and join us. Um, we'll go to green room now and uh, stop the public broadcast. Um, so feel free uh, to come and join us if you like. Thank you very much, and we'll be back uh, same time next week uh, to do it again.